First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Peace, peace. Back again with First World the Radio. Today we're going to do flip this script once again. This is part two. It's the question and answering by Brother Panic to myself. All right, so before we go in, let's bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim Mel. You here, brother? Doing today. I'm doing good, doing good. How about yourself? Oh, uh, well, brother, well, very well, brother. That's good, that's good. All right, we got Brother Panic coming in order. You here? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud, loud and clear. clear. All right, what's going on, Brother Lean, Brother L? How to do, how to do. Good, brother. Doing well, brother. Right, all right. It's good to hear. It's good to hear the brothers back on the Thursday, First World Order Radio. We just do them how we do. We're going to actually come back soon, give you all some more lectures. But this week, like last week, what we've been doing is letting Brother Lean tear it the, the up. You know what I'm saying? Which is... uh a natural thing, if you know a lean, this is just this is normalcy, you know what I'm saying. He came in last week, put it down correctly. Um, we did it in the format of Q and A, where I was asking him questions, and I have more questions for him today. And you know, a lean was taking some of these mysteries that we grew up with, which we thought were actual stories, that we thought were histories, but turns out. You know, they are metaphysical realities. And, um, you know, it takes a genius such as Aleem who spent a lot of time studying a lot of these particular uh, Bible mysteries which we heard all our lives in the form of these stories and uh, 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 returning them back to their metaphysical reality. And um, so, you know, that's what we've been doing. Aleem has been doing that for a while now in his lectures. And, you know, if if you aren't aware of this, um, like I said, you are definitely shorting yourself 
um, in terms of your study because you cannot study this material without running across uh, Dr. Lean's work clearly for years now. He's been lecturing. If you if you if you're new to the game, you can get a lot of his lectures that are even greater than what you have seen on YouTube from him directly. You can get them from uh, Dr. Dr. com, plus plenty of other items. But you can get there and hear some of these things. Like one of the first things, why this is so important, because. No matter who you are in this country, no matter how much you can sit around and, and talk about how much you hate Jesus, um, you still will force fed religious information. And if you are conscious and you are seeking higher information, uh, the first thing you must do is at least acknowledge that you're breaking the shackles of religion. So right. the most effective way to break the shackles of religion is not just to say, oh, it's not true, you know, Jesus is a white man who never lived, Um, that's that's usually basically you have to build, that's the first step, that's the disdain you build up. The same way the first step of consciousness is really starting to dislike white people. And then as you get more advanced in consciousness, you realize true consciousness has nothing to do with white people but has everything to do with you. So in that context, when you come when it comes down to destroying religion, instead of still hating religion and, and saying how much you hate Jesus, the best thing you need to do is decode and understand the origin or the concept of where these religious ideas originated from. Now, again, one of the best people doing that is Dr. Aline. And so I find it very important in why when I had the opportunity to question him, these are, the, these are the questions I came up with because, again, he was very helpful in not only uh, uh, not just destroying religion for me, but helping me get over it. You get what I'm saying? To get past it, to go on to greater things. And you'll find those greater things lie beyond you saying, fuck Jesus, fuck Whitey, and my melanin is just so wonderful. When you understand the concept of how to activate the melanin, that's when it really becomes wonderful. So we're going to keep on with what we were dealing with because what we started to deal with but time became short was questions on the Bible. So we're going to stay there for a while with a few more concepts from the Bible. And I'm just going to bring up subjects that are standard in the Bible. So we're going to skip around to the to all these things that you've heard in a generalized sense, as being absolute truth, and we're going to see how much the lean can break down of it or or the ideas or points you to things that you can find breakdowns yourself if necessary. So if Dr. Lean Elbey is ready, I'm ready. We ready, God. All right. Okay. All right, so I remember last week we were having a little bit of trouble with the sound until the end of the show. So if we have the same trouble, Aleem, I'm, I'll, I'll remind you, because, um, you know, clearly people want to hear what you have to say in, in, in this case. So we're going to start off. We was dealing with the Bible in show one, so we're going to keep on with that for a while. So a, a concept, we're going to start here with Adam and Eve, because uh, what I've heard before I, you know, you you always hear different things about Adam and Eve, and everyone likes to bring up that in the Bible, in Genesis, it says, let us make a race or let us make man. And, and a lot of the context that they speak about Adam and Eve as if there was people, uh, as if there was a group of people or someone that was there before. Then they said Adam and Eve was the making of the white race. And then the reality mm-hmm. is, we know there is no two people named Adam and Eve and so on and so forth. So what does Adam and Eve represent? Um, well, Adam and Eve represents, well, let's put that into all the, you know, um, ones which was God, you know, who made man in the image and after their likeness. Um, mm-hmm. That symbolizes the seven chocolates. Um, okay. If you go to the one-on-ones, the one-on-twos, um, it speaks about the seven creative spirits. 
that was, that is, and forever will be. Um, those are the same within the ancient comedic script um, as being the seven souls of Ra. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, within the Sanskrit teachings as the seven chakras or the wheels of light, color, and sound. All right. Mm-hmm. So or in your Bible, when you read about the seven churches or the seven seals that's supposed to be open, um, mm-hmm. those seven seals are nothing more than, once again, the seven chakras or the seven um, creative spirits or the seven seats of light, um, which mm-hmm. uh, form your physical body. It acted as the template for the structuring of your physical body. In other words, the one mm-hmm. that you know, the ring forth that start that stardust energy in which that form the physical body into existence, especially the ghostly um, state of existence, and then um, the elements of Earth, as we would say, um, took on uh, or was impressed upon that particular ghastly um, ethereal um, imagery, which began mm-hmm. to start becoming a physical um, mass. Um, so mm-hmm. that's how um, all these things began. So Adam and Eve um, clearly represents the first organ in which that is formed in the body, which is the brain mm-hmm. itself, in which that symbolizes the right hemisphere being a woman or Eve, and the left hemisphere mm-hmm. um, being um, Adam, you know. So hence Adam symbolically was the linear mind, while Eve was symbolically the holistic mind. And mm-hmm. um, and of course the serpent in the garden symbolizes the Kundalini energy, which is a belief mm-hmm. in which that got cast down here also with um, Adam and Eve, as they all fell from mm-hmm. out of the state of um, mm-hmm. paradise or heaven as it is mm-hmm. mentioned within the Holy Quran. Um, so um, we know within the Kabbalistic, um, Kabbalistic teachings that Adam had a heavenly form prior to coming into the so-called physical, which um, mm-hmm. is known as the heavenly man. Um, that symbolizes mm-hmm. the aspect of the mind itself. So the aspect of the mind um, being entrenched within the physical brain, which that form, um, you know, as we say, uh, the conscious centers or the cells, you know, in which that we are now the physical body that came from mm-hmm. that template that we talked about earlier. So, um, idealistically, that's what Adam and Eve symbolizes the right and the left hemisphere of the brain. Okay. Um, of course, we understand, too, that, um, you know, Adam symbolizes the carbon atom, you know, which mm-hmm. um, Bobby broke down years ago, coming from uh, one of the books by Peter Moon. Um, what was the name of it? It was um, uh, Pyramids of Montauk, in which that he breaks mm-hmm. down six six being carbon. And of course, um, it says Adam was made on the sixth day, which is symbolically you know, the sixth element on the periodical chart, which is carbon itself. Um, and mm-hmm. so, yes, Adam existed um, in that sense of the atomic structure prior to the red, in which that is known as um, symbolic to blood or life itself. You know, Adam mm-hmm. within Hebrew means blood, all right, or ground, mm-hmm. particularly as it is being translated uh, within uh, Genesis 1. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. we understand and that's what that means. And then, of course, uh, from that Adam came forth the evolutionary process, which is also symbolically to Eve, which Adams transformed um, or subatomic particles transform into atoms, atoms transform into molecules, molecules transform into cells, cells um, transform mm-hmm. into um, tissue, uh, muscles, mm-hmm. flesh, etc. So you also have those seven stages of evolution or, tra- or human transformation, and that's what Eve also is, is solid um, to. Mm, so, so that ties into the seven days of creation and all that. Exactly, exactly. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, there's a little bit of complaint. This is your audio is a little bit shaky. Yeah, can you hear me now? Okay, much better. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you're doing, all right. much better. All right. Okay. So, all right, so Adam and Eve represent the left, right hemisphere of the brain, which is basically right. polarity, the feminine masculine, right. the yin-yang. 
which makes a lot right. of sense. Right. The seven chakras right. symbolize the aspects of the right. The seven chakras that uh, represents the seven states of consciousness or the mind. So mm-hmm. as those seven states of consciousness um, condense, um, or as that energy is brought down, acting as a step down transformer to uh, form the physical body into existence. Um, the brain is manifested first within the human body, you know, which gives rise to the rest of the endocrine glands, the organs, and so forth and so on, as well as also um, is the template of, you know, for the physical body itself for those seven um, mm-hmm. energy centers. So um, all of that correlates to let us make man in our image and our style like that. Um, it's the term template, you know, or copy. Mm-hmm. Right, so, you know, so basically the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was just saying copy oh, no, no. of the earth because earth is mm-hmm. for three, four, one, so is the human body. Um, copy mm-hmm. of the fact of um, of the sixth element on the periodical chart being carbon and then when scientists test the physical body, um, they say mm-hmm. that um, we are carbon beings. You know, so mm-hmm. this, no, this, this is about, if we were looking at the Bible as a scientific book, then we can get more information on it. Um, as hmm. compared to as literal, as a as a history book, okay. Yeah, book. Mm-hmm. So so basically, Genesis is a, basically the story of of the Your not really the creation of the earth in a in a day to day physical way, but the story right. of of the concept of creation within man earth right. in in this this particular reality. You right. want to say that? Right. And if you go okay. back and check the, um, the summary of the Bible itself, we see that it's derived from the Hebrew um, text, uh, which is known mm-hmm. as the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night, or misnomer by E. Wallace, you know, e. Wallace Budge, um, known as mm-hmm. the Book of the Dead. Um, that's where it um, mm-hmm. comes from. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, when you mm-hmm. read the Book of the um, Coming Forth by Day and Night, it goes into detail about Atum, A T U M. Mm-hmm. Um, um, emerging from out of what we call triple stage darkness or noon, um, mm-hmm. you know, in which that he symbolizes the light self, and from hell came forth um, the Archidite, you know, which are the eight um, deities, you know, from hell. Right. Um, but before that, um, what he's spoken of is Atum being Ra or Ray, which that produced first the seven um, Elohim or the seven souls of Ra. You know, so mm-hmm. it depends on what you read them first, in which that um, they add on another number from seven to eight to nine, you know, right. um, back to ten, which is noon once again, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's showing you um, not just a number system, you know, um, in which that we know that English today uses the Arabic number system, which actually is ancient comedic. You know, mm-hmm. so all of this ties in. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. So basically, yeah. um, the Book of the Dead or Coming Forth by Day, which is one of the ancient uh, comedic books, one of the oldest. I mean, there's a few older pyramid texts and all the rest of that, but one of the right. most popular. And people tend to put all those books under one umbrella. But that the story right. of how Atum created this universe through masturbation and all that. Basically, yeah. Genesis sounds like a uh, uh, it just hacked off of that story, and just its tale is just another version of that same another telling of that same story, our story, exactly. and just exactly. accepted in this in a different context. Makes sense because now you have Atum, this lonely god who masturbated, and then you have Jehovah who cre- had did all this creation without a woman as well. Um, exactly. and it makes it makes a lot of sense. Okay, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. Right, now, well, and, this, even, this, and even in the Nazi text, you have that Dolma bro who created his seven children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right, so okay, right, got it. told over and over again. Mm-hmm. Retold. Okay. Right. Now, there's a few things with Adam and Eve that we always hear. Let me see if you can shed a little light on it. When uh, Adam realizes that he was naked and ashamed after, you know, in the Garden of Eden, then they got a fig leaf and covered, covered his nuts. Is right, there right. any metaphysical understanding to that? Yeah. Um, well, it was basically telling you a moral aspect is that mm-hmm. um, the first thing in which that brings 
shame, you know, is mm-hmm. the realization of nakedness, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, in other words, um, an aspect of sexuality, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, when we start making sex something dirty, you know, that, you know, makes us, you know, uh, feel badly or ashamed, just like you were saying about um, Atom masturbating, mm-hmm. you know, they translate that to, oh, you go blind from doing that shit. You know, right. So, right. Uh, right. You know, oh, you know, you ain't supposed to be doing that. You ain't supposed to be touching yourself. You know, that's a sin of God. You know, mm-hmm. and then they try to take you to the Bible where he's talking about Odin um, in the Old Testament where he's put his seed on the ground. You know, but that wasn't through masturbation right. per se. That was through the sexual act, and he chose not to impregnate his brother's wife, even though that was mm-hmm. the custom during that time period. And, of course, God, mm. you know, supposedly struck him down dead because he wasted his seed upon the ground. You know, mm. all these things are symbolic. You know, talking about um, 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 the science of Tantra or Taoism on, on sexology, which mm-hmm. is basically mastering the, um, the science of not releasing your seed for a certain time period. But then mm-hmm. Tantra, mm-hmm. we simply mm-hmm. circulate the energy seven times, um, you know, and then we release the seed um, after we have mm-hmm. um, extracted um, the energy from it, you know, in mm-hmm. order to regenerate the body, and then we release the seed um, in order to mm-hmm. go within the woman, you know. So that's actually what um, um, that aspect of the scripture is really talking about is um, actually tantra, um, kriya yoga, mm-hmm. tantra yoga. Um, most okay. people don't get it because they are wrapped up, you know, in just the story form. And just take it for what it is, you know, and as you mm-hmm. said, the naked and the shame part. Um, and then, of course, right. the fig leaf um, is symbolic um, to now what nations wear, uh, which is the apron, you know, um, mm-hmm. which is the covering of your uh, manhood or genitals. Um, mm-hmm. It's the term genesis, um, in which that's talking about the genes, um, right. in which that is through um, your ride of life. Thy staff and thy mm-hmm. rod, uh, which is right. actually the phallus of Phoenix, which is also connected and related to the sperm going up and traveling up the um, stairway to heaven, which is also known as uh, what we call mm-hmm. the ladder of Jacob or Jacob's ladder, which is spinal column within the ancient mm-hmm. Kemetic text that is called the backbone of Osiris, which is um, called the Jedi or Jedi, um, as you would have in Star Wars. Um, so all of that is talking about. Um, the illumination factor, and then of course, um, you know the thirty-three vertebrae, Jesus dying at the age of thirty-three. All these things are symbolic, but they're talking about essentially um, your physical body, your structure, and the things mm-hmm. which that occurs during the sexual act, and what you need to focus on. Um, in other words, if you are having sex, the first thing you must realize is that sex itself is marriage. Marriage is not $50 right. before the damn magistrate or judge who determines right. if you should get married or not. Or if hmm. your blood, um, you know, um, you know, your blood, you know, blood plasma and shit matches, you know, right. in, day, um, in old days. You know, um, all of right. that is something that's big for, um, you know, on the understanding, you know, of the mastery you know, of the science of life itself. Or they're trying to dictate um, their colorable law to you um, in the same time that you, you know, that you have unalienable rights, unalienable rights, mm-hmm. which means that um, you have rights from God on which they, they can't dictate because, as we know, God does the thing. So you have to right. understand um, that to the fullest, um, you know, the fullest, um, you know, essence, you know, as, as far as I'm mm-hmm. concerned, that's, that's what you really need to focus on. And so all of this right, returns right. back to the human body, you know, um, overall. No matter, you know, all these stories you read, that's where it really turns back to. These are all metaphors for what takes place in the um, human body. Um, human you know, body. And yeah, it makes sense to be, like, in the context of of this being a creation story, it sounds like he just realized, too, that he was a man. You know what I mean? Right. And then became naked and he then realized his nakedness and, and that is something to be ashamed right. of. You know what I mean as well. Right, exactly. So you know, so right. them covering so, the gender it sounds like right. he just realized he's he like, like Right, right. God came down into the garden in the you know, in the um in the in the nice breeze of the of the day and 
and found him, and you know, and here he is asking, um, um, you know, who told you that you was naked? In other words, right. how did you gain realization of this? You know, right. Um, and of course, he got to say, well, the serpent, you know, told me. The serpent told me. Right. Right. He's cool to lean and make it right. himself aware. Right. 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 But at the right. same time, of self awareness and self responsibility, he was still ashamed about them knowing it. So, right. which one ashamed is about, ashamed about what he has actually become? You know what I mean? Right, right. What right. he right. He's right. has actually become. Because, you know, which is the next stuff we're going to get into the Garden of Eden. Like, basically, there's that saying, ignorance is bliss. So he was in bliss right. until he became aware. Right. It's, it, it's just like exactly. us, like conscious people. Most of these niggas is walking around here in bliss. You know what I mean? One day they're gonna be motherfucking weepy and and you know life is getting better and you know you're getting your GED is gonna be fucking that's all you need to get and all this shit until you become right. conscious and you're really out of a certain level of ignorance or a certain level of of bliss which is only really amounts to hope you know what I'm saying right. you're living on the hope system you know you grow up and somebody tells you you could be president and then when you grow up and you ain't shit. You think your kids are going to be president? You know, it's not like my times. And then when your kids grow up and move next door and they ain't shit, you, start, you transfer that hope into your grandkids until you die. But that's a form, a form of ignorance and bliss. Unless you become conscious, then you know the reality of the world that you're in. Right. You know how sinister this shit is. Yeah, you, you know, mm-hmm. on a certain level, yeah. Because we need to be clear on this, too. These uh, uh, meanings have many different layers and in many different contexts because they're allegory, they're not actual history. So right. if you're looking at this history, you're looking for one definition. You get what I'm saying? Either you did it or you didn't do it. That's history. But if you're looking at allegory, uh, 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 a moral to the story, mythology, and all these things wrapped up in, it's, it's left to your interpretation. That's why so many people interpret the Bible to whatever fucking agenda they need. You know what I'm saying? It's you know, I see you, you got whole gay churches that say that gay part don't mean what it means. And then you had slave owners who said in this Bible is the absolute justification for enslaving black people. Then black people said, Well, we're gonna use this Bible because it's a symbol for our freedom when Jesus come and all of this thing. So because it's allegory, so we need to we need to get the concept of contradictions out of our mind. We need I should have said that in the beginning. So there's going to be many layered meanings depending on what work you're trying to do because that is getting information from symbols. Because remember, the ancient Camites wrote in symbols, and we just said Genesis came from from ancient Kemetic writings, which were symbolic, which means a symbol tells a thousand words. So it's no one story depending on what you're doing. So we need to get that out of the way when you hear many different stories on one thing. All right, so... Which brings us yeah, to... Yeah, let me say this too uh, before uh, we go on. Go ahead. In that first story, we have Adam blaming Eve, actually saying, well, right. God, you gave it to me, um, which mm-hmm. actually is, a, is morality. So when you're dealing with morality, uh, we're dealing with mm. morals, we're talking about that he denied or he was being mm. irresponsible. So that means that one of the things in which that caused our fall you know, from um, higher consciousness was the fact of us denying ourselves of who we actually are. In other words, mm. when we just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, Jeffrey mm-hmm. Osborne mm-hmm. or, 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 or um, uh, what's the other group um, where they always saying we're only human, you know, same type thing. But well, we're only you know, human. We, like, yeah. Right. Born we're to make mistakes and shit, right? Man. Right, right. So, so here we go with that same mentality. You know, and so we are, you know, denying the spiritual aspect, the higher aspect, the higher self, um, and we're just rolling with the lower self, the human, physical, mm. material portion of ourselves, and this symbolizes, um, you know, the denial or the irresponsibility, not lo- no longer wanting to be responsible um, for um, for us being gods. You know what I'm saying? Mm. God is just walking the planet, but instead wanting to be mm-hmm. humans, we we'll had to beg the God for forgiveness and so forth. And so on, when God exists within us the whole time. Right. Mm, interesting. Very interesting. And and it makes sense now if we understand this, this is the creation of man 
and basically on a more metaphysical level, man's predicament, man's scientific predicament in this uh, 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 reality, when you hear now Eve cre- uh, created the first sin, it now seems like instead of an actual sin, they're talking about polarity. Um, it, it seems like now they're making the point when they say there was a tree of life and a tree of knowledge and one was good to eat off and one was bad, it seems like now they're making more of a point of polarity than actually right. because we know there's no such thing as good and evil. One man's good is the right. next man's evil. So right. so we know there's no such thing as that. Mm-hmm. And so we see the tree of life and the tree of good and, you know, good and evil, or uh, what is called mm-hmm. the tree of knowledge, symbolizes nothing more than the spinal column. You know? Right. Um, right. At the top of the spine symbolizes entering into the um, Holy of Holies, which is the sanctuary, which is the brain, uh, where mm-hmm. the mind resides at, the soul resides at. Um, and we go there, um, in order, you know, when the Kundalini raises up with us, we go there, um, you know, as it is, as it ascends or resurrects or whatever term that we want to use, because this mm-hmm. is all terms in the Bible for it, um, to mm-hmm. become illuminated, you know, um, and then we right. And the energy descends and goes down. Then yes, um, this is where even Adam and Eve, where it says, um, for instance, Genesis the second, um, you know, goes to the third and fifth chapter. It tells you that um, Adam and Eve knew each other and mm-hmm. Eve conceived. I'm so totally you know, your your your, uh, your phone your phone is going out a little bit, Liam. I want to we want to hear we want to definitely dive yeah, into what you're saying. Okay, I hear you, you hear me better. now? Much better. Yeah, I was saying is that the I mean, Eve now symbolizes, um, you know, the book of Genesis says that Adam do and as can see. So knowing each other is so sexual. Okay, so we're talking about the three of knowledge. Hold on, hold on, man. We, we, we're, getting a, we're getting a lot of skips in your phone. A lot of, like, is is, is dropping in and out. Um, yeah, because we got to hear this. Um, it, it gets right, better, but it sounds like an a internet connection thing or or if there's a lot of programs open or something. It might it could be taken away. It's taken away from, because um, it's dropping. It's dropping in and out. We, we definitely need to hear what you talk, you know, we definitely need to hear your science. All right, let me see if um, I can close some, some programs out here. Yeah, okay, because even now you sound much better. <laughs> Yeah, you were sounding much better. And I know you're talking about uh, how uh, the tree of li- life uh, corresponds to the spine. Mm-hmm. Right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Much better. Let's hope it, let's, we're just trying to get it to stay on that level. All right. Okay. I, I, I was saying is that um, the tree of life and the tree of, of good and evil, or the tree of now, as it is called, symbolizes the spinal column, in which that when you look at the spine, you will see the vast. Um, nerves, or what is called um, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, which are the nerves themselves branching out of the spine into the various organs, the endocrine glands, that looks like a tree. So as the kundalini energy comes up the tree, um, it symbolizes what we call the tree of life. But as the kundalini descends down the tree, it symbolizes the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So when you look at in the Bible, it talks about um, Adam knew Eve, and she can see. Is talking about um, when the energy comes down the spine, um, as the sperm also um, looks like the spinal column, um, and as the sperm mm. comes um, goes up the spine to receive the spark of life uh, from the um, from God, or as the nectar or from the soul force embedded inside of the pineal gland, it comes down um, the spine mm-hmm. to reside within um, the testicles to be good for into the mm-hmm. womb. Um, hence, um, that is the symbolic to the tree of knowledge and good and evil, um, you know, which actually is talking about um, your genesis. That's why it's mentioned in the book of Genesis, which is your genes themselves, the carrying mm. on of your genealogy, which is your blood lineage. Um, that symbolizes mm. the knowledge of good and evil, um, the play of man on this world or in this particular third dimensional state in which that man battles daily, mentally, um, emotionally, um, back and forth. 
between doing what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So right. that, okay. that play told right there within that particular instant when it says that um, Adam knew Eve and she could see. Mm-hmm. His mm-hmm. and knowledge is one of the same. And it's talking about the sexual experience itself. Wow. Um, now, we also know that Eve is the initiator of right. basically basically Adam. Is there any sign to that? Now, when I've always heard it, I just always took it, cause, and again, as I pointed out, this has many different meanings depending on it, that the feminine side, cause which she represents a negative polarity, is the key to right. your magical a- apparatus. So right. that's where the knowledge or, or the secret lies to actually have to wake up the even uh, to, to line up more, I should say, your left side of your brain, so it could get so so it could actually work for the right side. You know what I mean? As opposed yeah. to shutting mm-hmm. it down. Right. So, um, did you have any any other thing that you studied that came across that 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 speci- metaphysically points to why Eve is the initiator right. or the feminine energy? Right. I should say. Right. Well, we, we know that when we look at the story on um, the ancient king of uh, Tamaray or Tamari or as we say Egypt, we will find um, on the walls, um, in particular at the um, Temple of Het Heru, um, mm-hmm. it shows you the um, higher glyphs of what we uh, it was called our set Mary, um, which becomes mm-hmm. the Mary of the Catholic Church and which they call the Mother of God. Um, mm-hmm. That is nothing more than a form of Eve. So when we look at Eve, she is the epitome of the life principle. I know in um, Hebrew is Hawa, which means life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, even God's name, you know, within um, Hebrew is Yahawa mm-hmm. or Yahuwa. Mm-hmm. So that means Hawa is nothing more, um, just like within um, the Kabbalistic text, it states that Shekinah, is the feminine face of God. So mm-hmm. uh, within your Bible in Ecclesiastics, it says that wisdom is she. So mm. wisdom is symbolic to she, so feminine aspect. Within the world, right. Not, the wow, world, that's interesting. Because in Gnosticism, mm-hmm. Sophia means wisdom. Sophia, right. And, and, right. and, that, and that's the great mother in the Gnostic content. That's interesting. Uh-huh. Right, that's all in the same. So what is all of that? Right. All of that is nothing but the Kutalim, the Serpentine Fire. All right? Uh, mm-hmm. We know that because Jesus himself said, be gentle and don't forget. Um, you know, but yet, um, when he said he's going to be, be um, like Moses in the wilderness and lift up the serpent. He also told his mm-hmm. disciples, um, be yet gentle and don't forget. Um, what is it, smart is, smart is serpent. So, serpent. Um, smart serpent. Right, right. 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 It, that was just serpent. So, um, a wise is something that it is translated. So, wise and wisdom symbolizes female, and then it says as a serpent. So, the serpent and the woman became synonymous. So, now mm-hmm. that's why it says that the serpent and he tricked Adam, because the serpent and the woman became synonymous. Um, mm-hmm. This is why you will see, um, in ancient Kemet, you will see um, also on the walls, of um, head Hebrew, head you will see the image of Sata. Sata, mm-hmm. um, if you just add the N, becomes the word Satan. Satan, and right. Sata, right. If you continue reading in the um, pyramid, um, in the, um, um, it's not the pyramid text, it's the mirror text, which is the, um, right, which is the pyramid text. If you read in there, it states mm-hmm. that there's a um, prayer. Uh, spell in which that he would say to become like Satan, which to become immortal. Mm. Now we understand mm. that as we were giving the illustrations of information there in, um, in Atlanta, Georgia, um, a few weeks ago, um, we showed how um, hold, hold, hold the feather, um, the, uh, the sound is cutting in, in and out again. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Whatever that, yeah. whatever you do yeah. when you do that, it sounds great, but it it tends, it sounds like it's dropping. And we're missing some of the stuff okay. that you're saying. Right. I, w- I was saying is that when you read about Sata, um, it speaks about how by repeating this particular spell, you can become immortalized like Sata. 
Um, in mm-hmm. other words, Sato, which is the word Satan, was never negative in the ancient Kemetic belief system. Um, as a matter right. of fact, in Arabic, the word Sata um, or Shaitan, as it is called within Arabic, Shaitan means a thing of clay. Now, we understand mm-hmm. that Adam was made from clay, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, even on the potter's wheel of Kanun, um he formed the Ba and the Ka, which was of clay. Now, the Ba mm-hmm. means soul, Ka means spirit. Um, symbolize the fact of the union of the spiritual soul in the physical body itself, which is a thing of clay. Now, mm-hmm. so as um, this thing of clay is being formed, it means that your physical body, um, and Brother Bobby broke this down already years ago, he was saying that the titans and the word Satan is one and the same. Mm-hmm. It's talking about actually the destruction of your physical body. Mm-hmm. Right? So, um, the mm-hmm. is your physical body. That is the thing in which that uh, fell from the celestial elements, which is stardust energy from the explosion, which a star, that's how actually it was formed from, um, was from stardust. And as that stardust condensed, um, it drafted the rest of the elements in which that we see on the periodical charts to condense and which that formed the physical body into existence um, through um, the male and female. Um, you know, so we understand that is how um, that transformation takes place. Um, mm-hmm. When male and female come together, um, there's a vortex in which that opens up um, at the point of orgasm. And when the sperm hits the egg, um, the sperm tail breaks off and the head of the sperm falls through the egg shell and mm-hmm. unifies with the nucleus of the egg and it blows up to the equivalent size of it, and then it begins to go through what is called um, diffusion, I guess you can say, or, or, you know, in which that it begins to um, go through the genetic, the genetic, uh, genetic changes, in which then at that point, a vortex opens up, in which that draws down um, the heavenly principle, which is the sole principle of man, you know, and mm-hmm. which that it invents itself within, um, like I said, the first organ, one of the first organs in which that is formed, which is the brain itself. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the heart is also formed, um, you know, soon after, you know, around the same time or soon after the destruction of the brain. Um, there's a mm-hmm. portion um, of the soul principle in which that also goes within um, the heart, in which that links. Um, matter of fact, it's in the right um, or, um, um, orchid, um, man, what's that, right um, chamber of the heart, in which that um, there's an atom, a seed atom there. Um, this is within the Rosicrucian teachings. It says there's a seed um, atom there that is in the heart in which that actually links and connects what we call the ethereal or the silver cord. And when that cord is mm-hmm. cut... Um, of course, the soul is um, you know, from the body itself. So there's a direct connection between um, the soul um, in the ba- um, in the brain, as well as that seed atom within the right ventricle um, um, of the heart itself. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Interesting. Huh. All right. Let me All see. Right. Let me think. Um, is there any more Adam and Eve that jump out? Well, I guess we can move on to the concept of the Garden of Eden. And and I guess we'll bring it back to Adam and Eve, what it would mean for them to get kicked out of that Garden of Eden. So um, the question, I guess, is what is the Garden of Eden on a more metaphysical level? Um, The Garden of Eden is symbolic to infinite consciousness. Mm -hmm. And how we know that is because... um, even Jacob, when he wrestled with the angel Uriel, and the angel Uriel hit him in his thigh, um, mm-hmm. you know, at that point, he said, you know, that he should God, you know, he went to the land called Penal, you know, as a mm-hmm. tiny land, and he seen God face to face. So that mm-hmm. means that his own nature had to be um, quenched. You know, that's why Uriel hit him in his thigh or in his lower nature, the quenching, and then from that time on, Jacob's name was called what? Israel. 
um, within wow. even Israel yeah. needs to ascend to God. So that means that mm-hmm. his kutalini to be in his and his thighs cause his kutalini mm-hmm. to raise up his spine, um, which is to ascend to God, which is, and of course, when we say God, we know the word God comes the word good, which is a German word, but we trying to give this for those in which that mm-hmm. uh, right. now in, in the Bible context. But in, right. Right. the word netaru or netter or elo or mm-hmm. Elohim or whatever term. Um, but right, we're trying right. to, you know, put well, we're trying to put it in this context. context. Yeah, we're putting it in this context. Right, 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 right. So mm-hmm. we know that this energy um, traveled up, upward, you know, and so it's the same concept, um, you know, with, you know, with everything that we're talking about. And it's it based on um, the raising up of the resurrection, you know, which is that 90 degree perpendicular level as it's taught within Freemasonry of that, of that serpent. I'm traveling up the spine, and um, you know, and Earth, Wind, and Fire have been trying to tell people that you know since 1977, at least Maurice, uh, Maurice White has, you know, in which right. that um, uh, right, you know, um, the Serpentine Fire, and it's no coincidence right. that um, you know, about 10 years ago when I was still on my space, it was writing me and thanking me for putting this information out. Hmm. Mm. Right, wow. right, right, mm-hmm. right. They've been trying to show black people this type of thing since black people have been, you know, red light grinding. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Dancing, dancing, watching Dolomite. They've been saying this. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, I guess for uh, folks like that, it would be interesting or or, or, or or relieving to see brothers teaching that, you know what I'm saying, to masses of people. So y'all need to understand how lucky y'all are to get this information for free, actually. And like I said, you know what I mean? But same time, Dr. Lean and myself still have bills to pay like everybody else. So that's why we sell our products and lectures and all those things. So before we go on, I'm going to take the time to say y'all need to visit uh, DrLeanLBay.com. That's plenty of information, his upcoming dates. Uh, you know, his calendar is up there and plenty of product information. And I know you guys need it because I get emails every day about a whole bunch of shit that you can't get. Candles, chakra stones, crystals of all sorts, all of that stuff Dr. Aleem sells, plus a lot of magical items. Right. So y'all need to see Dr. Aleem L. Bay for not only what I'm talking about, but plus much more on his site and... Also, his classes, you need to uh, get involved in that. I think he has plenty of testimony. He has a page on his website uh, with plenty of testimony up there about people who have taken his class. So um, um, it's the thing to do if people are seeking tools to help them in their transformation. And, of course, um, in fact, with the help of Aline's queen, Kadira, she helped hook me up, and I launched my website finally, which you guys should be familiar and easy to remember because if you went to my YouTube, which is Occult Lectures, the website is now occultlectures.com with an S. So you can reach me at Occult Lectures. I'm starting now to put up all the products, all the information about the products, more and more information. Let me know what you would like to see up there. I'll be happy to put it up there. So I'm slowly but surely building that site, Occult Lectures dot com occult lectures dot com you can always still email me panic pack at hotmail dot com now you have the option to email me or go to the website and you can buy the panic pack directly it's up there we got um uh the Ganesha crystals the oils magical powders spiritual baths meditation CDs my classes, all the information you want to uh, uh, want to know is one click away. Occultlectures dot com, and of course, like I said, AleemElBay dot com, um, where you can get more information, more tools to help you with your transformation. All right, so now that the commercials out of the way, we're gonna get back to the action. So we were talking about the Garden of Eden. Aleem is breaking down some of the concepts of the Garden of Eden. And I also heard right. you talk about and also the concept of uh-huh. the Garden of Eden also symbolizes, um, like we said, infinite consciousness or stages mm-hmm. of consciousness. Um, mm-hmm. You know what we call mm-hmm. life consciousness is having the ability in order to be within gamma or beta state, like what mm-hmm. we're doing right now. 
But when you enter mm-hmm. into Alpha State, um, Theta State, Delta State, then you're going deep into the different layers of consciousness. Um, mm-hmm. We say that the seven stages of consciousness, you have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. So mm-hmm. um, Adam and Eve symbolizes these different states. For example, Adam symbolizes what we call life consciousness, being aware at gamma or beta state. Mm-hmm. Eve is going deeper. The, the word E symbolizes darkness or sub. In other words, well, like us right, right, as, an, as an evening, right, as an, right, as an evening, where we even get our night from. Right, as the word as I, right, night, right. exactly. So now you have pierced the state of consciousness and going into the subconscious and the deeper levels of that until you reach infinite consciousness. That's why Eve symbolizes the right hemisphere of the brain is because that's the holistic portion of the brain, which would be more so of the abstract, the more so of, um, mm. you know, the mm. which that um, brings the, the knowing, the the, the, right, the, the, the the knowing, mm. the intuition, the right, clear point that state, right, the intu- mm. the, uh, the in, right, the, uh, the right. Now, um. That's interesting because this comes to mind now because there's a story that before Eve, God said sent Lilith down Lilith. to marry Adam, right. but she mm-hmm. was she, basically she was too powerful for his dumb ass. Right, she didn't want to be a Right, she All had right, he had to send. Right, right. Mm. right, that was symbolic to the fact that the conscious mind um, wanted to be more powerful than the conscious mind. Um, mm-hmm. Which it actually mm-hmm. is, you know. So right. Lilith symbolizes through that aspect. He just symbolizes the different stages of that aspect of Lilith. Lilith symbolizes the whole mm-hmm. subconscious, um, superconscious, uh, magnetic, infinite conscious levels. Those, right. All those levels gotcha. is what Lilith is. The, right. But the primal, the primal the version of the primal of version of Eve, or the primal version of the feminine en- energy, which he needed. Exactly. Wait, Adam, Adam, she, right. It, it didn't have any place here with Adam. It couldn't. It couldn't unite with Adam right. as his other half. Right. Exactly, because it was too deep. So he had to get get a more subtle version, basically. Right. Um, to get a more to, subtle to convince version. him. Right. right. A more right. subtle version. The same kind, and right. you can see it's, that the same kind of right. way that even men now need their women to act a certain way for them to even accept right. them as women. Mm-hmm. Right, because yeah. yeah. a woman ain't walking through the door going how much dick they like to suck and and then raise your kids. <laughs> You're not gonna be like, right. wait a minute, she sucked too much entirely, too much dick to be sitting around my house. You know what I mean? So you, you would you want her the way you need her the way you need her. You need we actually need our women or the ones we call the ones we find as our wives. A certain behavior. Otherwise, we like, nah. I can't fuck with her like that. I can fuck with her, but she ain't coming home with me. You know, you know what I mean. She's too right. much for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So I could see where your even your conscious human thought would say, well, I understand why she sucks dick and she's a goddess and do as thou wilt. But still, <laughs> you know what I'm saying she'll be coming home kissing me in the mouth with that shit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, cause you're still having a human experience, and you like. You know, you know. Each time she go, well, I'll be right back. You know, I know she go to suck a dick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, right, so, you, right. so, you can't, so I can see. So now it makes more sense when I hear the story that that uh, basically when Lilith was his first wife, but she was just way too powerful for him. So they had to. He got a do over with Eve, and basically, right. the, and that's the Eve, right. And, and, mm-hmm. and notice, and notice when they tell the story about Adam and Lilith. How Lilith, um, um, it was a sexual position in which that, um, mm. you know, Adam was going to, you know, do missionary on it. And she was like, nah, I ain't being up underneath you. So, mm. you know, it, it's telling you that, mm. it, it, you know, that sex starts where? In the brain. So it's telling right. you where the whole thing starts His at. His mind this was about it. control. Right. It wasn't yeah. even balanced. His mind was about controlling her. Just, just the same right. way we just discussed. Most dudes think they're getting a good woman, but it's really a form of control. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just you like the left just hemisphere of the brain that attempts to can control. Right. The left hemisphere mm. of the brain can attempts to control the right hemisphere of the brain. 
And right. it does so because the the, um, the major principle in which that enlightens the right hemisphere of the brain has not risen yet, which is the mother principle, which mm. is also symbolic mm-hmm. to Lilith. Right, 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 you definitely. Know? So it, right, and she and right, and, she, and and she does have a connection to the root chakra, like Adam, but she's the, the goddess of blood, the goddess of blood, the goddess of blood, right? And the root chakra, mm-hmm. which is symbolic to Adam. Adam means blood. Um, Lilith, you know, the sacrifices of children. Well, what's the children? Yeah, the children which, which is sperm. which is the menses, which is the menses. Right, the, menses um, the sacrifice for the women. of children is like yeah. you, you would yeah. have a child if you didn't have your menses. So Lilith is connected to the to the menstrual cycle, which is why they define it as the killer of children, because they only talk about the blood. Right, right. and plus children blood. can't and children can't can't be born when the menses is on. So it's the killer of children. When the menses is on, yeah. They, they basically, right. it was a sacrifice of Lilith. That's in the mythology. In, exactly. That's what the menses comes exactly. out to. That's the mythology. Right. So niggas, let's try to speak code and shit, you. So be happy. Right, right. Lilith is your friend. And they kind of showed it in the, uh, I think it was the fourth or fifth season, whenever they're up to of True Blood, they did a whole season of Lilith. And how they did it was because you can find the truth of Lilith being in early versions of Genesis. What they did was say, well, Lilith was the first vampire goddess, the first Bible before this Bible. They tried to put it in that context. And they still connected her to the blood. And she was a whole vampire goddess. And they connect right. her to the blood, and and really that's basically the root chakra. You know what I mean? And, and that's right. what Adam was. Now that 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 put you putting it in that context makes so much more sense. About if if you're looking at it in the first context of they're trying to uh, talk about the balance of masculine and feminine through this whole story, and how it's coming together, and how it's actually conflicting, and the roles of masculine and feminine in these situations makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So now, so then it almost answers its own question as I was going to ask Adam and Eve getting kicked out of the garden, but if they're real, if, yeah. if the garden now, as you pointed out, represents different states of consciousness and they, they're right. becoming the ultimate man and the woman is just telling you that they're actually falling from consciousness because when they became right. naked in the shame, their next step was getting kicked the fuck out. Um, which right. is a big, huh. it, we said that right. them it's, saying, well, I realize I'm a man, right. right? I realize that I'm a man. Then, then I do not exist on that higher state of consciousness without doing the work to get there. Now that I'm on Earth, makes makes some sense. Now, um, so the Garden of Eden. Um, let me see. I've heard. It, it, uh, wait, let me say uh-huh. this too before you get to that question. You have mm-hmm. long term memory and short term memory. Right. That within itself shows you the entrance state and the exit state of those different states of consciousness. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. So long term memory, short term mm. memory. Those mm-hmm. two symbol those two. The long term memory symbolizes the evolution or the Eve portion. The short term memory symbolizes Adam. All right. DNA. You have RNA, which is ribonucleic acid, and you have, which is actually somebody to short-term memory, and you have mm-hmm. DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, which is symbolic to long-term memory. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Adam and Eve symbolizes those two principles, too. And now that mm-hmm. the DNA is being changed, all right, we're seeing an evolutionary state of what we call from Homo sapiens sapiens to Homo Christos, which means the same mm-hmm. as Christ. And Christ, mm-hmm. of course, we broke down last week, is Christos, which means to be anointed with actually the DMT, more DMT being um, excreted from the pineal gland. During the times of wakefulness, you know, mm-hmm. in which that is producing the psychedelic, um, miraculous, um, miracles or healings and so forth and so on, these things are going to become more um, pronounced in this day and mm-hmm. time based on the astrological alignments in which that is taking place upon this planet. And this is what the ancients was talking about, you know, of the time in which that would come of this new earth and new heaven. Um, we're mm-hmm. going to do that right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, so that transformation 
Okay, so now that makes sense because it seems like now in this context of Adam and Eve, that first process of, of, of Eve bringing this, this fruit or this light to Adam who who is basically right. the ultimate ultimate basically the ultimate description in human being, and Eve the description of a human but with this knowledge which is just the right brain. Just she seems like she has the method for enlightenment, and Adam is short term memory, which is he 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 forgets easy, and her being long term memory, she she she's remembering these things. And and her represent negative polarity, darkness, and bringing it to Adam, which means light, mm. or, or bringing it into the light. So this process, right. and it's something I've been always talking about. Well, it's not about being dark side or even light side. That's a process of bringing darkness in the light. Out of darkness comes light. So Eve represents right. darkness, even in Genesis itself, saying out of darkness comes light. Represent the same process of us going into the feminine side of ourselves. And the, eating off the fruit or being offered the fruit from the feminine side and bringing it back to our humanity to better our humanity or Adam, if you will. It seems like that when, um, if we put it in this same context, that this process is going on, and what you're talking about, the changing of the DNA, is this same Adam and Eve process, the same, it wasn't like one event. It seems like it's the same offering and taking of this fruit um, that that Eve or the dark side or the feminine side of yourself keeps giving you, keeps feeding you from exactly. the dark side, exactly. from that from exactly. that tree which is the spine, which is Kundalini, which is the snake, which right. is Kundalini. So from your Kundalini enlightenment or your Kundalini work, it keeps bearing fruit in the, you can say in the pineal or in the brain. It keeps bearing right. fruit that we keep bite. Your humanity keeps eating off of to keep getting fucking enlightened. And if you're saying the Garden of Eden is levels of consciousness, you're, you're basically in and out different levels of that garden. Uh, uh, you're getting kicked out and, and, and into, into greater and greater realities. Mm-hmm. So it's like getting, so getting kicked out of the garden is, is going to the next level, basically. You get what I'm saying? So my reality mm-hmm. may be a certain level of consciousness, and we could call that my garden, let's just say. But then getting kicked out of the garden is actually getting kicked out into another level into another garden, you know what I mean? Into another level of consciousness. Yeah. It, it, mm-hmm. That's fucking interesting. It seems interesting that where you putting this shit, y'all don't know. Aline be putting this shit where you can get, really can get this shit. All right, let's keep going then so we can get the bang for our buck on this show. Let's get to Cain and Abel, which is, which is their kids, and this big fight between Cain and Abel. Of course, we know... It's polarity, but let's 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 probe it a little bit. So Cain and Abel, Abel gives a good offering, and Cain just beats this nigga up the head. What's that all right. about, metaphysically? <laughs> well, remember, Cain had fruit. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, you see the fruit, co- you know, connection and vegetables from out his garden. Mm-hmm. Abel had animals, but which mm-hmm. he sacrificed. Mm-hmm. Right, so the animal being sacrificed is somebody to your lower nature being sacrificed, so he being hit, you know, mm-hmm. higher, you know, than Cain. But Cain mm-hmm. name would then Hebrew means king. Mm-hmm. Okay, and remember, mm-hmm. uh, when you look at Mount Cook, <laughs> all right, on the, on the tree of life, Mount Cook, um, um, is. The lowest spear, but it means kingdom. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Okay. Right. Now, now, interestingly, where the angels reside at within Arabic is called Mount Kuf. Mm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Mount Kuf, we think it is in heaven because sex does start in heaven, or in your brain, in your mind, mm-hmm. and that energy mm-hmm. is brought down. Now, of course, transform from on high, and the pineal act will step down, transform of that of that energy to reside at the prostate gland um, for the man, or at the uterus for the woman. All right, mm-hmm. in which that now that becomes Malkut. All right, so as you said, it's nothing but different state polarity. All right, mm-hmm. came mm-hmm. with the fruit, symbolic to a king. All right, which. 
that's mm-hmm. what he is actually. Is Cain is king within Hebrew. Now, mm-hmm. means vapor within Hebrew. Pinch the breath. Now, he gave his animal sacrifice. Hence, is telling you that through the breath, you can sacrifice your animal, which is your animalistic mm-hmm. nature, by mastering the science of breath. Cain mm-hmm. is in the head. And transformed him actually, or literally, if you want to believe it as far as a historical thing, to a vapor. Mm-hmm. Right? Same thing with Jesus saying, um, I give up the ghost. Okay? Uh-huh. In, in the New Testament. But in this particular case, Cain was put a mark on his head for hitting Cain, uh, for hitting Abel in his head. He had a mark on his head. All right? Mm, so right. that no one would kill him. Now, of course, we got to think about, well, who else, hell, based on the story, it was nobody but him, um, his father, Adam and Eve. Right, and right, his on brother, the planet. So who, mm-hmm. who right, so who in the hell is going to kill his ass, and then they have to put this book <laughs> for him so nobody kills him? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Of course, you don't know what that means, because the mark is talking about, once again, the soul being embedded inside of the pineal gland. That's the mark. Mm-hmm. That's X mm-hmm. marks the spot. All right? Okay, gotcha. And, right. Mm-hmm. So Cain symbolizes where the soul in, becomes incarcerated or incarnated into the physical body itself. Hence, mm-hmm. he symbolizes being hit in the head you know, um, um, with that mark as well as also he can able in the head to symbolizes the breath. We know that when the um, child gets spanked on his ass by the doctor, it takes his he, first he, breath he breathes from right. hell, and that first breath activates what? The soul. Mm. Right. So right. the whole okay. thing mm-hmm. is being played out through first breath initiating um, the soul into activation. Mm. Okay. Damn. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay, we um your 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 phone was getting a little bit shaky. Like we want to make sure we hear everything too. It was sounding good. All right, for can a you hear me? Right, did everybody Perfect. hear that? I can I can Perfect. hear you. Okay. Yeah, we yeah we we basically hear. I just didn't want to go out. We basically heard what you said, but we didn't want to go out. Okay. So okay, so that leads us to uh, uh, Canaan, based upon Cain's name. Um, how right. does that correspond? Oh, how does that fit into this picture? That's actually symbolic to now, of course, again, because remember, Canaan is mm. the land of milk and honey. Right, the kingdom. All mm-hmm. right. Now, there's two chemicals that is excreted from the pineal gland, uh, particularly which is called serotonin and melatonin. Mm-hmm. And guess what? The color of melatonin is white, like milk, and the mm. color of serotonin mm. is golden, like honey. Mm. Mm-hmm. So the land of milk and honey is the pineal gland. You got it. Oh, it's the pineal gland. Oh, okay. Right, which is X mm. marks the spot. Which is the mark of the soul, which is on top of the head of Cain. Right. Exactly. And, the activa- and some of the activation is his brother is basically able, the breath. The breath, exactly. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. All right, and I right. think so. Cain, so check this out. Cain uh-huh. is also related to the word con, K A N, con. Khan. Mm-hmm. Khan. All mm-hmm. right, and we know that the word con within um, the ancient um, and teachings is the serpent. Mm. So, wow, we That's know that. Right, remember? Right, so remember the serpent is what is able to transverse between um, Malkut, the heaven, which is the Kingdom of above, as well as also now quit the lower, which is the heaven below. Mm. In other words, um, the, the the serpent, which is Kong or Cain, is the only one able to transverse those particular um, polarities. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Oh, interesting indeed. Okay, makes sense because. Uh, Star Wars, they have the Wrath of, of, of Khan. The Wrath of Khan. Which, That's right. Which is Cain. And in, in, in the last one was interesting, and maybe I'll talk about it more, and I've talked about it at the time. They did a lot of pineal references. For instance, 
he had 72 of his crew that was in deep sleep throughout this whole show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we know 72 mm-hmm. is is the number of chakras on the pineal gland. And uh, there was right. just a lot of, if I go back and watch the movie, because at the time I talked about it, but there was a lot of references to this con, especially in the new Star Wars, being connected to the pineal gland. So that's interesting that you say Khan and Kane is the same thing, and Kane right. being connected to Pioneer now makes sense. And we need to know this is not a mistake because Roddenberry was a uh, uh, an occultist, and that's the guy who created right. Star Trek. And exactly. uh, the, the boy who did Star Trek now, J.J. Uh, J. J. Abrams, he's also an occultist. He did Super 8. He did that show Lost. And he had two more occult. He has a occult show out now, and a, he had one more occult show and one more occult movie. So he's a definitely an occultist. So it wasn't by mistake in Star Trek. And, and remember, in the first Star Trek, which was done by J.J. J. Abrams, he did all that shit about the red matter, which is real, real occult all the way through. I broke it down at the time, but you know, I'll forget these shit. So that's interesting. We say, see how this thing all plays out, and how they have this play with words. And I'm glad you're saying this because I've seen. A couple people tell me how worthless dealing with the etymology of words is. And I'm like, shit, you can just deal with the etymology of words and be a fucking master just off of that alone if you're dealing with the origin. Right. Now, I heard you in the right. lecture gave two definitions of of words. The one that, and, and I'll describe the words that you use, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. The, the description I got was one was the actual meaning versus the meaning we understand it today. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Right. Um, you have cognitive and you have deep, deep notative. Deep notative say, is... Say one more time you were going out. Say, say one more time you were right, going, you were going out. Right, you mm-hmm. have denotative, okay. which is actual origin of the word, and then you have cognitive. Cognitive mm-hmm. is the origin of the word in which that we now have to be. Like, for example, the word nice. We know that nice mm-hmm. means uh, who is, you know, real kind, polite, and so forth and so on. But the origin of the word nice is someone who's different. Hold up. Say, say it again. Your, your, your phone was going out really bad, and we need to hear this. Right. You I was saying. You talking about the or- origin of the word nice. Right. I was saying, like, for example, the word nice. The word nice, mm-hmm. as we now know it, is someone who is kind, polite, generous. But the, right, that's, cognitive, cognitive that's our cognitive meaning, understanding, right? Right, that's the cognitive, that's cognitive meaning of it. But they, denotice, but they denotice meaning of it, the origin of it, mm-hmm. it means someone who is ignorant. One who is ignorant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and so, so, so if I say you're nice, right. basically the true meaning the true meaning, and, and we need to understand that when 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 the ancients created these words, they were putting a spiritual, they was they they were factoring the spiritual meaning. So when they created the word, they were putting spirit in it. So the word meant what the fuck it meant. Ain't no ain't no well that's how we use it now type shit, and it doesn't still have the same original intention or spiritual impact on it. So I, I just wanted to get that out of the way, but that's interesting. So the word nice as you were saying, meant ignorant. Right. So wow. who's ignorant? Who get, who get uh-huh. taken advantage of? Right. And this is an Oxford Dictionary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. An older Western um, um, dictionary. Right. So, you know, so basically dealing with the true et- etymology or the true vibration of the word, um, you could you could actually become enlightened through that through those means, do you have any right. good books? Is, doesn't um blacked out through whitewash? Doesn't uh, Suzar Epps go through a lot of this? Yes, she does. And that's okay. An do you book. have any other books? Do you have any other books you can recommend for people? Because I think if them understanding a lot of the <laughs> origins of these words will go a long way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nigger being one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. The word nigger being one of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely um, with that word, right? <laughs> right. And I was wondering, did you have any other good references or good books people could look up to uh, 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 kind of, you know, get into it? If not, the Suzar Ebb's books is, is, I know it's sufficient. He has more than uh, one, I believe, too, with the same name. 
Yeah, I know. You can also go online. It says online etymology dictionary. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Which is a nut, which is a reference, which is a uh, a website that I use, uh, online etymology dictionary, and it goes very hard. Right. I think it's one of the. Right. I think it's a good thing we should factor into our study because you get the original vibration or the original intention, and really you get just the way certain words are corrupted gives you a lot of knowledge as well. The word demon, for example, you get what I'm saying? Right. And then after that, what is it, uh, Geometria, where they do the Kabbalistic numeration of words? The Kabbalistic, right. Numbers. Right, what we call numerology nowadays, right. And what is numerology now is Geometria. Mm-hmm. So you'll find out things like what they tell you is each word has a numerical value. And if the numerical right. values are the same for a word, then the word means the same hands down. Ain't no doubt about it. Exactly. And the example they always give is the word serpent and the word Messiah and the word right. love. Have, right. I think it's love and unity have the same numerical value. Therefore, it's no question, yep. it's no debate. They mean the same thing. So the word serpent and Messiah mean the same okay. thing. And if you understand okay. that, that, if you can understand that concept, then it'll it give you it, you could move past debates. You don't you, you're out of the well side. Well, someone said this and someone said that. So you're dealing with the you, you're cutting you're cutting with the source. You're getting straight to the source information and you're cutting all the theories out when you start dealing with etymology of exactly. words, metria, simple shit that you could do and you could find online. And and there are plenty exactly. of books. I'm sure if you if, if you go on Amazon, you could find. You get what I'm saying. So, so, so I just wanted to put that out. Put that out now. I want to talk about why we at Cain and Abel uh, a little bit while because it, it does with the subject kind of close. When they talk about the people of Ham, and then they'll say right. uh, Ham, the Ham tribe is black and they got cursed. Um, what metaphysical information do you have on the people of Ham that we hear so much? Right. Well, the word Ham, but uh, again. Uh, when you go back to the origin of it, it means, uh, within Hebrew, it means Tam, which means black, which is mm-hmm. also the word for Kemet, uh, which is mm-hmm. black lands, which is, you know, the term, you know, for ancient Egypt. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, people of Egypt is called the Hemites, all right? Um, mm-hmm. And it was from the, they was, you know, essentially Kushites. Now, mm-hmm. what happened is, is that you study about Ham and this so-called curse, it came through the child of Ham, which was the fourth son, which was by the name of Canaan. Mm-hmm. All right? So, mm-hmm. Canaan, um, you know, allegedly is what um, turned, quote-unquote, you know, um, turned white. But even in that tale of that curse of what they're talking about, Canon, I told you, we just broke down to you that canon symbolizes um, the land of honey, which is the species right. of you know, melatonin and serotonin. Now, continue, mm-hmm. on, you will find out that the pineal gland, as it begins to stop producing enough uh, melatonin, you know, or melanin, you know, through the melanocytes, and mm-hmm. it is said that the fear which is through extra production of adrenal, um, adrenal, um, adrenaline through the adrenaline glands being produced in the body. And mm-hmm. the deficiency of vitamin B6 and vitamin B12 is what is called vitiligo, or mm-hmm, mm-hmm. albinoism. And that took mm-hmm. place, and that's the, the curse in which that transformed from ham, you know, which is black, to being cat. Which becomes that curse, which is talking about um, that al, you know, that albinoism, which begins to come into play. So mm-hmm, you have mm-hmm. so-called black people who now um, looks like, you know, they have white skin, light eyes, um, mm-hmm. yellow hair or blonde hair, but you still see their facial features. Their phenotypes is still that of uh, melanated um, Kushite being. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens is mm-hmm. that. Um, that's what that was really talking about. And that occurred um, after the last ice age, which was around 2,000 years ago. But when mm-hmm. you start getting into the leprosy and you start getting more so into the curse, 
the real curse of what took place, which is with the Albion being permanent Albions, and how mm-hmm. we know this because based on the Remendals, um, he has what is called um, the Punnett Square, in which that you have Big B, Big B, Big B, Little B, Little B, Big B, mm-hmm. and then Little B, Little B. Big B, Big mm-hmm. B is dominant superior. All right, well, mm-hmm. Little B, Little B is the recessive. Mm-hmm. So it's telling you that mm-hmm. if you have four children, one of them would have recessive genes. All right, so like, for example, mm-hmm. if you have two albino Nubians, all right? Okay. Or two all albino right. blacks, if you had them together, if they had children, the child, you know, one, um, um, one child would have dominant traits and would not possess any recessive traits from them whatsoever. It would be totally mm-hmm. black. Then you okay. have the other two, Little B, Little B, and Little B, Big B, which would have the traits, but they would be black. Also, right. but they would have the traits of their mother and father. Right. So Basically, you pass it on. Okay. Right, would be passed on. Look, just like mother and daddy, they would be albinos too, or albino mm-hmm. too. All right? So that is the curse in which that is taking place, and what they're talking about the land of Canaan, talking about the deficiency of melatonin or uh, what we call melanin being excreted from the pineal gland and not enough of it going into um, the melanocytes of the skin in which that turned the skin from black to white or pale. Mm. Um, that is actually what they're talking about, about that land of canon. That, that's what they're talking about. Um, um, essentially, in terms of... Um, right, through that process. Mm. But we know mm. that somebody else had to have tempted even further on with the genealogy um, you know, of these so-called Nubians and albinos because um, the European himself can't change back to black no matter what he does. You say, mm-hmm. Unless he mixes in with us and it comes out later on through um, the team. But if there's mm-hmm. no um, mixing in with us, then he stays as he is. So that means somebody had to have tampered with the genealogy. Um, if you want to say that he came from um, the Nubian albinos, then he will have to um, show, um, you know, the disconnection or the connection between the two. And he has not been able mm-hmm. to do that because here we have the Eskimo still yellow skin, as we just say, still living up in um, Alaska today, you know, um, coming forth from the Bering Strait, coming from out of Russia and, and China, coming across into Alaska. Um, mm-hmm. And it's still yellow skin today, still dark skin or yellow skin today, brown skin, yellow skin um, today. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, they, and they've been there for nearly, you know, after the last ice age also, you know, for 10,000 years. So, you know, we know that the theory or, you know, or the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Clarence 13 X, but it's also of. Uh, um, the more scientific of the noble drama, we understand that right. they had to, that that there was some tampering in which that definitely took place, and these particular um, schools um, actually hold those keys of secrets. They have it encoded, you know, in, 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 you know, Yaku, you know, as they would say, the Yaku, you know, messing with still, you know, you know, the sun and so forth and so on. They tell you everything which that is taking place. But they say it in a coded type of way. But when you start breaking down the right. story, you start making sense. You know, there was a um, um, Bobby spoke about this years ago too. Is that during the 15th dynasty of the Hyksos, there was a actual pharaoh whose name was called Aku Kerr. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And during this time period, um, he ushered scientists to start doing certain things, and then. Uh, reading the book of Hermetica by Walter Scott, it's the that the magician said that the worst thing that we've ever done is create man in our image and after our likeness. Right, right. You know, so uh, we understand that that, you know, that is the, um, the lineage of what is taking place and what they talk about the original curse, which was actually um, the losing of um, the toning or melanin, I should say, within the Milano site, in which that it, um, eventually um, changed us to. Um, have it, or what you know, have a vertiligo and you know, to become an albino. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that was the original concept of the curse. Right. 
of of leprosy. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. All right, so let's move on. So you always hear this story about the giants on earth. There were giants on earth, and I believe mm-hmm. they were children of angels. Do you have any science yeah. on that? Yeah, well, when we talk about angels, we talk about angles of light. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that, um, that certain angels of light when they hit the pituitary gland and cause a, um, what the scientists call a malfunction, in which that causes the individual to become old. Um, mm-hmm. In other words, they can grow um, new feet. Um, the tallest structures of fossils in which that they are found is actually of human beings mm-hmm. being as tall as 36 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Right? This is what um, is talking about um, the historical origin of Freemasonry by um, C.W. Ledbetter. He was, um, he was mm-hmm. like the right hand man who. Um, Andy Bissot, right? Um, C.W. Ledbetter, he stated that the pick, which is awful, at one time were these tall beings who grew as tall as 30 feet, 36 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Um, but certain things and certain climate changes occurred on the planet in which they had some strength. What we gathered from that was that, from my research, is that um, it was the right, so which that bombarded the planet, in which that caused a volcanic activity, which that occurred, in which that caused um, the sunlight to be blocked and a lot of dust in the sky. And what happens is that, of course, um, these things can go behind the waterfall and um, into the earth. And being that mm. they do not, um, um, you know, enough sunlight, you know, over the years. It began to shrink in oh, size. Oh, hold up, Elaine. Your phone is going out just a little bit. You need to hear you a little bit better. Okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, my dear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I was All saying right. that they went behind waterfalls, different areas, and, and went into the center, you know, into different areas of the earth. The earth, because of being that in that direct flight, they began to shrink um, in statue. Now, of course, we know that the um, Twa people are the oldest people on the face of the planet. Um, mm-hmm. All the books said that you get the promotion signs and symbols of men written by um, Albert Church Ward, and you get the Children of Moo uh, written by his brother James Church Ward. Um, if you mm-hmm. read uh, Ancient Egypt and Lion Girl by Gerald Massey, who they were students of Gerald Massey, um, you get Valencia Stratton book, Celestial Ship of the North. Um, she says it, as well as also within her other book. Um, I think it's called on the fraternal on the fraternal um, buildings. So if you get these particular books, they all state that the pygmies are the oldest people on the face of the planet. There's another book mm-hmm. in which that is called um, in, um, Gods of the Ancient West, in which that states that the Twa people um, on this planet um, at least 30 million years. Mm. Right? There's another book written. Um, there's another book by Forbidden Archaeology written by Michael Cremore, in which that states that humanoids, all right, uh-huh. um, have been on the planet at least 2.8 billion years. Damn. Mm-hmm. Um, so so when we're talking about um, these people, this is who we talk about. And at one time, they was um, taught, they had to be taught because of the dinosaurs on which they walked the planet. So um, after the destruction of the dinosaurs, there was no need any longer to be that tall. So Nature, as it does, mm. adapts. So, mm. <clears throat> they they mm. take uh-huh. you know, um, over the um, the times, and of course, we still have you know people which that still get up to you know seven feet, eight feet tall, um, so forth and so on, um, you know, but never get to that height in which that we once were, which was thirty six feet tall. Um, then you find others twenty four feet tall, and then you keep finding them. Shrink and shrink at 18 feet, mm-hmm. um, then um, 12 feet, 9 feet, 7 feet, and then 5, 4 feet. Um, so they keep finding these particular, uh, um, you know, fossils which that shows um, our, you know, decrease in mm. Okay, okay. All right, interesting. All right, 
you have, uh, there's a story about uh, the Tower of Babel that we're going to talk about because it's basically about all these motherfuckers trying to build this tower, the Tower to God. And he strikes them down, and they all speak these other languages. That's how different languages yeah. got on the planet. Like niggas will say, like and niggas, grown ass people believe this shit. Yes, they how do. different yeah. languages got on the motherfucking yes, planet. They do. Motherfuckers yeah. can still yeah, speak the English same. from the <laughs> south and from LA and sound yeah. like two different motherfuckers. <laughs> like the goody mob right. used to talk. We didn't know what the fuck they was talking about. Yes, yeah, son, nigga, right there, down there, there. It's like, nigga, that's some Tower of Babel shit for your ass. So we know that's got to have a metaphysical meaning. Have you did any work on the Tower of Babel, this story? Yeah, the word Babel or Bab Ilion, um, the word mm-hmm. Bab in Hebrew means gate. The word Ilion means high or heaven, um, in which that is referring to um, the constellation Orion, actually, um, the man upstairs, mm-hmm. as he referred to as. So it's talking about the gateway now. You know that within... Ryan, it have a it has a nebula in which that gives birth to stars in the constant oh, line. So that's the gateway. That is where it's talking about um, metaphysically that the um our source comes from. Mm-hmm. Right? Um so when you talk about Babylon, that's really what it's talking about. And mm-hmm. when you look at it also from another esoteric point of view, you will find that scientists have been able to do what is called um, fragmenting, you know, they fragment the brain. And what they've been able to do is compartmentalize the brain. And you have people who can actually, you know, were never trained in Russian, but they can speak Russian. You have people mm-hmm. who never trained in French, but can speak French, or never trained in Italian, but can speak Italian. The reason mm-hmm. why is because um, that proves that you have a past life and you also have an ancestral, an ancestral data bank, mm. all right? So not only do mm. you have a past a past lives, um, which you still have access to, as we talked about, which is at the um, back of the area, which is called the Medulla Magata, but you all have ancestral DNA, which is, um, you know, uh, what is called giant molecules. That's what DNA actually is, and which that also... Um, activates and open up, but which that give you access to lineage, as we said, seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's mm-hmm. side. So they give you access to the particular um, languages. So that's what it's talking about, is that when the Kundalini comes up the spine, that's what actually is the, um, the Babylon. Um, and remember, in the New Testament, it tells you what that Babylon is, is actually the Holy Spirit. This is why you hear um, niggas in church talking about Humming, 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 you know, and all that. Uh, uh, and so they okay. babbling, <laughs> right? But that's coming from the um, Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, which is the um, serpentine thing coming up the spinal column and illuminating mm. portions of those brains in which that they don't use on an everyday basis. Ah, mm. so, so basically, mm. that's what that's those signs are talking in tongues that everybody right, can sit the around this motherfucker thinking right. they're doing something divine. I'm glad you no, no, that because I, I, right, right, I get right. that go, question all the go, go time. To right, go to First Corinthians, uh-huh. the 12th chapter. It tells you you get nine fruits of the Spirit. It tells you that you have the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpreting mm. tongues, the gift of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of knowing, which is knowledge, the gift of training, mm-hmm. the gift of miracles, um, so, so, and the gift of understanding. So these are the nine fruits of Christ, and it's mentioned right there in the first um, book. In First Corinthians mm-hmm. um, twelve chapter, so yeah, that is nothing more than being able to speak in tongue. In other words, a tongue was never taught or learnt, um, but you have access to it because you are a byproduct of your ancestral lineage. Is what is also you have um, your uh, in, your incarnation and what is called your oversoul, which your Medulla Magata is connected to. So you have mm. access to those particular languages, and that's what it's talking about: is that God came down to the languages. In other words. Um, um, you lost the access, to, you lost accessibility to the mouth of God. Mm. Because remember, we mm. broke down. In order to babel, you must have a mouth. And remember, we told right. you that the mouth of God is the medulla oblongata, or cultism. Right, right, so right. The opening of the mouth ceremony. Right, right. 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 the mouth of God was shut closed. Hit. Mm. Um, you got the confusion now because it was shut closed. 
But we can open it up anytime that we want to, and that's by the resurrection of the Kundalini. That's one of the first places that the Kundalini hits once it um, um, comes up the spine, all 33 vertebrates hit. Well, basically, the, tr- the, tr- the true way to build the Tower of Babel, actually. Right, that's true. Right, that's true. Oh, right, exactly. You broke that, so you just broke that mystery because there's a lot of people who email me and ask me, well, if, you know, what's the speaking in tongues? That's one of the things people can't get over in religion because it seems that they, most people, no matter how far they're out of it, they seem to think that's a phenomenon. Now, my answer was always, well, they, people are there having a kundalini experience and not being able to handle that right. kundalini experience. They're just exactly. babbling, basically. They're, they're basically right. speaking out. In, in, um, which, but the way you just broke it down makes so much more sense when you show you that there's actually a story on this speaking in tongues, which is the Tower of Power. Now yeah. that shit just, when you connected those two, that shit lit everything up for me. That makes so much motherfucking sense now when I hear this motherfucking story. Of course, you know, when they say Tower, you know, you know it's a Kundalini story, but I didn't connect right. that motherfucker speaking in tongues. Was was about this real interesting now? Um, activated OMAP ass. So we have to activate DNA in order to remember a past life. Now, Aileen talked about this last week, and is important. So we'll. I think we should speak on it again. He talked about uh, the medulla oblongata. So I'll let Aileen talk about that. If you're still asking that question, and you can hear more on that in last week's episode. We're going to make that available to you guys soon. So, Aline, past lives, how do you tap into past lives? Right. Well, um, the Taoists, um, when they study Chi and they do their practice of Tai Chi, they have come to the understanding that your past lives are stored in your medulla oblongata, which is at the back of the head, which in the Hebrew teachings is called the mouth of God, as well as also within the ancient comedic teachings called the mouth ceremony. Mm, um, open up the mouth ceremony, right. Right, open up the mouth ceremony. Mm. It's talking about how to tap at the back of the head 25 times, three times a day. Um, tapping at that area, you, you do what's called scarification. And it gives you the ability in order to not just access your past lives and your oversoul, but also give you photographic memory. So that mm. is the area. And so um, that's why the Kundalini um, hit in that area is so important. And um, actually resonating that energy there, uh, matter of fact, one of the symbols uh, within Hebrew, which is gulp, um, you know, um, is of an axe. So actually, it's, it's, uh, when the cleaning energy comes up and hit the medulla oblongata, it sounds like a thumb noise. Mm. You actually now, they also, the call, they also mm. call the medulla oblongata the reptilian brain. How does that tie into this? Right. Well, the reptilian brain, if anyone reads um, Nutricize or African Holistic Health by Dr. Laughter, he breaks down the fact that there's 12 centers mm-hmm. on the reptilian portion of the brain, which is called melanin centers. These are the 12 melanin mm-hmm. centers. Um, mm-hmm. um, so, you, um, you know, so these areas are there at the reptilian portion of the brain. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so this is what is illuminated. And within the European, he states there's only two areas in which that is activated out of that. Mm-hmm. All right, as compared to all 12 within us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's see, with, the, with, a rept, with a reptile, basically, most reptiles are known to be highly adaptable to whatever surrounding as if they're tapping into something um uh, primal. So, for instance, you could throw a reptile in a new situation, and it tends to adapt immediately as if it could tap into something um, from other lives, past lives, or past, uh, you know, as as a collective being. You, you get what I'm saying? So, like that, right. when you see reptilian behavior, and you're talking about tapping into medulla album goblet to tap into other aspects of yourself that's actually been on the planet. So, you may find yourself in a new situation and know how to adapt or, or, or like a chameleon, blend in and work based upon you tapping into the medulla oblongata. So I can see when they say the reptilian brain, because the reptilian brain, they said, doesn't go past. Why they call the medulla oblongata is because our medulla oblongata is the whole of a, of a reptile's brain. A reptile's brain doesn't go past the medulla oblongata, while it's the first 
circuit in our brain. But basically, if you look at a reptile's behavior, they're the most adaptable creatures. That's why, they, you know, they've been here almost the longest. And they and right. it makes sense because right. they're the most they've been animal. here the longest. Right, they they did a one of the oldest motherfuckers here, so it makes sense that um, the reptilian part of our brain represents the oldest part of us. You, you know what I mean? Right. So to tap into it like a reptile, I can see why it has the nickname and it corresponds to tap into it is to tap into that ancient part of you. The same way on Earth, the rept- reptile represents that old adaptable animal that's been in damn it. It's in every damn environment in some context. In, in some form of incarnation, which is we can tap right. into. So that's interesting. So well, activated... See, those, uh, those, those, mm-hmm. those 12 centers also symbolizes the 12 disciples of Jews also. All right, mm-hmm. so um, like when we're talking about, when we go to the Bible, Matthew, the 10th chapter, the 7th, the 4th verse, or Mark, the 3rd chapter, the 14th, or the 19th verse, and they give you the names uh-huh. of the 12 disciples or the 12 apostles, that all correlates mm-hmm. to the 12 sites in the brain. So Bible mm. always talks about the substantia nigra. If I remember that, which means black substance. It actually, like I think it's like the eleventh in the chain of the brain stem, called neuromelanin nerve tract. Um, mm. and if mm-hmm. every is stimulated properly, I think you get Parkinson's disease. That's where you get a lot of the aluminum um, um, accumulated at in the person's brain, like what happened with Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What with um. What's that little white boy from the back? Michael J. Fox. Right. That's what happened with them. Right. That area in the uh-huh. brain, um, um, they lost the neural in it. And then, um, in which that, that disorder known as the Parkinson's disease. So you have the right. sub- um, suspect. In Nagra, you have Lodi's um, Corellius, in which that Bobby mm-hmm. always talked about, which is actually called the Black Dot. Right. Mm-hmm. This is where Brother Black Dot get his name from, which is the mentor. Neuromelanin tract. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, this is what gives you the ability to astral travel and projection, uh, you know, as well as soul travel events. This helps you also recall mm-hmm. your dream. The area mm-hmm. is stimulated properly, it helps you restore um, or record your dreams. Those two areas in the brain or the areas in which that uh, is normally activated within every one of us. But then you had the other ones, you know, um, you have to. Um, Oh man, the old man, what's the name of the The Broccolius. Um Final oh, oh. Uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah. uh the subcolius, the nervous trichini, oh. uh the mes uh, the meso um oh, oh. don't if, if I'm you know, then you have the pontus oratus, the trimentius, oh. you know, uh shit the, the moly is what um the dorsal motor, the retro and the and the um para um uh, you know, so those are the other um areas and all twelve of them correlate to what we call the twelve disciples allegorically. Mm-hmm. So when those twelve mm-hmm. disciples okay. are activated, it can move up into um the lamb, which is the pioneer lamb. Mm-hmm. In which that um, twelfth pair of crane nerves sits around it, in which that pair means two, in which that you know, of course twelve times two is twenty four. Hence the twenty four elders that um, that that um, stood around the throne of God and worship God day and night, um, which mm-hmm. is about the soul and stuff that in the pine gland. So all of that is um, talking about the human body again. You know, what I'm saying in these areas, in these major areas, they give you they give you stories of these of these uh, the names behind it. So that when you're awake, you will understand that it was still conscious about yourself. Of course, this is only at the highest level of decoding. Um, um, mm-hmm. For many, right, um, right. they're stuck at, right, for many, they're, they're stuck at the story. You know what I'm saying? And get the story, you know, story. Story. right. Right, and all the time, right. I just leave them stuck in the story. Right, the, the Sunday school level of the game. Right, the mm-hmm. Sunday school level. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, let, you let know, they're stuck mm-hmm. in the story, they can't, they can't um, understand, they can't. They can't possibly understand that. No. Right, right. They're not even open to the understanding of this no. they feel like got it. You know what I'm no, saying? Not. One thing they you know, and they and they they're proud to tell you details of this story as if it's a form of learning, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um 
I think, uh, Lean, we we might have to come back again next week to do a third show because there's still many questions. If you're down, I'm down. Yeah, that's good. We can do that. Okay, all right. So all right. let me let y'all know we'll, we'll be back with um, with part three. Again, we're, we're still going. We're going to go into the lights until they kick us out off of blog talk. But um, just so everyone here knows, um, before we start getting kicked off, um, we'll be back next week to pick up. There's plenty more questions. And you guys can um, send on Facebook any questions y'all want to hear, Brother Lean break down metaphysically. But we still got uh, much to talk about. Manna, Golden Calf, Ark of the Covenant, R- River Jordan, Sun Standing Still, David and Goliath, King Solomon, Jonah and the Big Fish. We still didn't get to the Morris Law. And if we can get in today, before we get cut off, I want to lean to talk about some of the things in his classes so y'all can understand how he empowers you with this information more than giving it to you in a lecture form. He teaches you this kind of stuff and more in the form of a, a student, a classroom setting, which is a, which is a whole bunch, a whole much more powerful than what you can get on a blog talk show. So that's where you guys want to allow your interest. Of course, Aline does his classes. You can get with him for the schedule. And as you all know, I definitely do my classes. And now is the time I'm about to start a new cycle. So if you're interested in my classes, now is the time to get in. I know Aline is going to start a new cycle soon. So now is the time to get in. We both have payment plans uh, for our classes. So y'all, y'all need to inquire. What you have to do is email me panicpack at hotmail.com, or now you can take your monkey ass to my website, occultlectures.com. That's occultlectures with a S dot com, occultlectures.com, or you can go to a Lean's site. You can link to Lean's site from my site, or you can go directly to a Lean's site, drleanlbay.com, and um, he has a shitload of items that you can use in your magical transformation. These are powerful, some rare, but very powerful, very important tools you can get from a lean. I know you need them because people ask me all the time, where can they get such and such and this and that? Well, you can get them from a lean. A lot of what I didn't even know a lean sold that people ask me for, for instance, particular candles and all these things, a lean sells it. What he told me was he had, because what you may not know, he had a store in, in, um, in his area where he lives, and he just put his store online. So he's got a shitload of stuff up there for your magical transformation. Dr. AleemLBay.com, very powerful. And, again, all my stuff, I'm in the middle of building the site. Y'all can look around. Y'all can, I'm in the place where I'm taking suggestions, the information you guys would like to see up there on my site occultlectures.com, but you can get the herb pack, spiritual baths, spiritual powders, um, CDs, deity readings, consultations, all that. I'm starting with the consultations now. So there's a whole bunch of shit you can get by just going to the site. And if your monkey ass already been, been there and already went, then you need to help out from all this free information y'all niggas is getting and send out sites and information to other people who are new in the game so they have the opportunity not only to get information like you, they can help us with our products to keep us in business enough to give y'all more free information. Remember, the information you're even getting tonight, which we're going to continue with in a moment with Dr. Lean, is uh, the benefit of years of studying. And we're not talking about clicking on YouTube. We're talking about years of buying books, years of standing in places, Years of going to lectures, lectures and building other lectures. Le- years of sticking around, standing around, hanging around, probing, all sorts of shit that in this day and age, most of the Internet consci- people of conscious worth does not have to do. And that's fine. That's not saying no one is lesser, but let's understand and respect what Aleem had to go through to, to even deliver something that's so fluid that you're getting tonight, which takes a long time for people to get through in their consciousness, right. especially when it comes to religion. So you need to respect and appreciate that. And at the same time, the products that him and I offer you are things that can help you. You're not buying worthless things. Even the products we help you 
offer you to sell still <laughs> help in your consciousness. So it's, so you get two for one stone. You get to help us, and you still get to do something to yourself because, let's face it, you, I know my products and the lean products, some of the things you can get to help you cost less than the fucking nasty-ass Chinese food that you're buying every night. So it's worth it, and it helps us to keep giving you it helps, it helps us to keep giving you the information that you're getting tonight, which we're going to keep going. All right, so now that we got commercial number two out the way, we're going to keep going with the information until they kick us out of the building. And the next thing I want to talk about and ask Aleem about is the story of Job. <laughs> we hear the story of Job. The nigga was a baller, and then Satan uh, uh, told this, uh, told God, I bet you I can make this nigga fall off. Now, when I heard the story and his undeniable faith, I just kind of, it, it always made me think of this, they're really talking about the soul or this spark of light that's really unbreakable in us. And we can see the mere fact that we're here today listening to Brother Aleem and Brother Panic is motherfucking the trial of Job. Because any nigga going through what we went through, right now we should all be listening to Wheezy and Nicki Minaj. But the fact that we need this, there's something in us that was not tempted or wasn't bro- broken on one level. So we're going to get into what Aleem has to add to the story of Job as well. All right. When we look at Job, um, uh-huh. of course, we, we look at Job. And, and um, as you see, neither I nor um, Brother Peck likes likes that. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. I just filled out a disability form, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to do we this right. Our lives to this, mm-hmm. We dedicated our lives to this right. shit, so. Um, <laughs> right. So, God, I work right. But, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you, right. When you're looking at, um, um, so, um, I found some interesting things in it, um, astrological things, as well as also the fact of the story. Um, we hear the story of Job, um, you know, you know, being a man who had, you know, wives and, and you know, much cattle and sheep and, you know, so forth. Oh, on. I mean, ho- ho- very, ho- very ho- hold on man. one, hold, hold on one second, Lee, before you go into that. I want to say, if you guys are in the chat room, you might start getting cut off. Call in right now to stay in this conversation. The number is 626-414-3535. If you call in, you'll keep going. If you're just in the chat room, you might get cut off, and you have to get this on the download. So you, if you want to kind of stay on, you want to call in now before the phone line close. All right, I'm sorry, Eileen, keep going. All right, so you said well, we know Job. the story of Job. Um, Job uh-huh. was his man, um, he had his wife, um, uh, uh, he had you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of you know sheep and lambs and, and, and cows and whatever else. So you know, mm-hmm. as the scripture would have you to say, you know, tell you, you know, he had herds and herds and herds. Um, and mm-hmm. he had children, you know, plenty of children. All right. Um, so what we find out is that Satan, um, who supposedly was cast out of heaven, um, returns to heaven. On his own terms, as we know of, and um, mm-hmm. he goes up into heaven. And he, while the sons of God are praying to God, he walks between the angels or the sons of God, and he walks between them. He goes straight up to God, and him and God start having a conversation while the angels are still praying to God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, right. So God, you know, so God asks the question. He said, "Yeah, do you know my son Job?" He said, "Yeah, I know that nigga. What about him?" <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, um, um, he's a good dude, you know. Um, I don't think you can corrupt him. He said, "Yeah, whatever." He said, "Yo, you give me, you know, you give me terms and agreement, and I get at this nigga." All right, so I said, well, "Okay, you do everything you can to him except kill him." A word? Ha <laughs> ha! All right, so mm. go. He said, "Hold up, but you have to make him curse me." Oh, shit, I get that. All right, so thing comes back out, you know. He, he, now this is. Satan, walking up in heaven now, you know, just to have a conversation with God with no problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. This, this is how it goes. Right. Right, right, right. And comes back down 
to God. I mean, it comes back down to the to to the earth or whatever you want to say. Because you know, as Christians say, um, Lucifer or, or Satan is the god of this earth. Um, well, mm-hmm. as we go there earlier, Satan is from the word Satan, which is the serpent itself. So it's a form of Kundalini. The Kundalini mm-hmm. raises through all seven chakras. It's, it's the crown seat, the god, which is the serpent, embedded at, and the conversation between the cobra or slash the serpent takes place with that between um, the soul itself as it's being awakened. And so that mm-hmm. talk is talking about the awakening of man, all right, mm-hmm. which is hence, i.e., the mind itself. So um, as the serpent comes back down and travels through the seven um, chakras, it resides back at the bowl, which at the base of the spine. Mm-hmm. The imagery of having the wife, the imagery of having all these children, the imagery of having all these herds of animals is all talking about the animalistic nature and the children, um, hence the sperm, hence um, the lower nature itself, where all these things come mm-hmm. from, which is fruits of life, um, hence the term, um, tree of life, um, you know, also is come forth from that area, um, you know what I'm saying, essentially. Um, so, you know, all of this is talking about that from a more metaphysical standpoint, all right? So we mm-hmm. can read on in the story is that everything was destroyed. Um, Satan destroyed his, his, um, um, killed his, um, killed his um, children, killed his herd, his, um, his animals, killed everything, okay? And even his wife, so, and, it, and, uh, and um, Noah had three friends who came over, too, along with his wife. And, he, and they all told him, saying, yo, son, why don't you just go in the curse of yo, and die? You know? And um, so instead of cursing God, mm-hmm. like Noah, um, what Job did was curse the day he was born. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, 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 of course, right, so, of course, I don't see any difference between that. However, he cursed the day he was born, cursing God. So when God found uh, out that he just posted that he was born and being cursed at home, he gave him all of everything back, doubling and tripling it or whatever else. He gave him back good wife, gave him back children, he gave him back good friends, gave him back all the animals and you know, they just, all right. So once again, um, we see that God is a gene <laughs> who can grant wishes, who can take wishes away. All right. Um, we understand is that even when you go and do the research on um, Aladdin's lamp, mm-hmm. you'll find that the pineal gland symbolizes lamp in which that you rub, in which that produces this genius or this genie or this god in which that can to your wishes. But you can't do that uh-huh. unless the energy um, ignites the pineal gland, which that is the rubber, um, which is symbolic to rub it. Um, that particular area of the brain in which that awakens, which is the Hindu or the Buddha or the Christ within you, in which that gives you the ability to have everything in which that you can see, touch, taste, and smell. This is what the law of attraction is symbolic to. So now you can have everything in which that you uh, once seen, touched, or smelt, you know, uh, before, and now you can have it more abundantly. All right? So um, this is what we're going to tell is telling you. Um, um, that internally you can produce all these things. However, you have to, um, as they say, curse the day you were born, which is actually symbolically talking about you have to murder your lower nature, your self. Right. Um, this, is uh, yeah. within, like, this is what is mentioned within the um, the um, Holy Quran, Sophie 7, as well as also within the one and the number two, of the more science temple. It speaks about um, how many cells are there. It's two cells. It's a, Lower self, the lower self is everything in which that harms. So you have to curse that side of yourself, the animalistic mm-hmm. side of yourself, which is that joins you down into the animal nature. And by cursing that, then you can ascend into your higher self, in which that can make all things abundant. Because it also says, well, what is the higher self? The higher self is the virtue, is the mother of virtue, in which that way, mm-hmm. love, mercy, and right. Right? Mm. So, that's what the higher self can bring you. It's love. It's, you got a new wife. It's, you got a new friend. 
Hence, he got more animals he can think of, more children he can think of. So, hence, that was symbolic to him having love more abundantly. Mm. He rolled with his higher self. As compared to him, he rolled with his lowest self, which that would have caused more anger, which that harm, which would have meant him to God. All right? So, mm. that's what it's all symbolic to. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. All right. So let's move um, from uh, to manna from heaven. You know, we hear these Israelites and the devil uh, in 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 uh, 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 what's the name in um in in the desert. God sends down this manna, and I ain't yet to go to the store and see manna any motherfucking way. What, what the fuck is they talking about when they talk about manna? <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 we 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 know if you know we, you can speculate based upon consciousness, but we, we want to go based upon Dr. Leem's work on manna. Right, right. Well, it, it was forty years and forty nights. The children of Israel means to ascend to God. Um, mm-hmm. Were in the wilderness or in the desert, um, um, and they was on their way to the this land as we were saying. Um, so in that desert, the wilderness, as we guys Muhammad broke down within his um, book, um, The Message to the Black Man, he tells you that mm-hmm. the wilderness or the desert is to talk about the human body itself. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's what okay. that means to symbolic. So here are the children of Israel, which means to ascend of God, and once again, and, and they are in this wilderness for 40 years, all right, 40 years. And during that time period, in order to keep them recharged, um, they had to eat manna from heaven, all right? Um, yeah. Think about last week that 300,000 tons of stardust energy forced to the planet Earth daily. And as melanated beings, we absorb our share of this um, stardust energy. Well, this is actually mm-hmm. symbolic to the manna that fell from heaven. And so mm. we eat the manna that falls from heaven to rejuvenate ourselves and to regenerate ourselves, revitalize ourselves, to re-energize ourselves, all right, or revitalize ourselves. So this is what the meaning of the manna falling from heaven actually is about is our daily um, absorption of these celestial rays and these cosmic mm. uh, rays or stars to which they have falls to the earth daily. Um, um, which your wilderness or your desert, which is your physical body, must take in in order for it won't be a desert or wilderness. What does what is it about a desert or wilderness in which that um, we first see? We see that there's nothing in which that there, in which that what grows. So being that there's nothing that grows in the desert or in the wilderness, that is symbolic too. Now, as you take in these energies, this force, this manna from heaven, um, now things begin to grow. We, like they rejuvenate, mm. revitalize, re energize itself. So now mm-hmm. you will actually feed the body what actually it needs, which is primary source of energy. That secondary source, which is from the food and come from the water, is the same source meaning. Right? The first primary source is sunlight, cosmic energy. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, solar fatic energy, what is also called um Manna from heaven is also referred to as the Holy Spirit. Um, is also mm. referred to as prana. It's also referred to as chi. Also referred to as ki. Also referred to um, as kokuna mana. That's how we know that it's the fall of manna. Is because when you ask a Hawaiian um, about the word kokuna mana within their language, it means big energy, a big force. Mm. Okay. Or manna in a in a. Which is the same mm-hmm. word in which that is used to believe the Hebrew of the word manna. So this mm-hmm. is talking about celestial energy once again, and this is what we must take in, and that's what that story is about, in order to rejuvenate ourselves so that your body can be in wilderness. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Hey, now you broke that damn mystery down because I was in the store looking for manna. <laughs> 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 All right, so now I hear all about a couple of meanings. One of the meanings I heard for the golden calf was, you know, that the uh, Moses and the Israelites blew this horn, and that was a symbol of the age of Aries. 
and why he's so mad at this golden calf yeah. story uh, because it was the age of Taurus, which they were coming out of. Right. Now, I also heard mm-hmm. that, if, you know, this this calf is Horus, you know what I mean? But now mm-hmm. they give you the, uh, you know, that's the Egyptian symbol, you know, the Egyptians' false idols. Um, when they tell you, when the real story, the false idol is actually the human body. You're not supposed to worship the human body. That's actually the false idol. The um, golden calf, they, I've also heard people say, well, it was actually Hathor, the feminine that they were raising up, and that's why Moses is mad. And I kind of tend to believe that if you believe it was real people. You get what I'm saying? Right. But if you know these guys are all symbols, I believe the first uh, uh, interpretation that sounds um, uh, more like it, that they were coming into a new age and that they were talking about dealing with old, uh, old age mentality in a new age, which makes sense. And I just want to briefly say, um, from the age of Aquarius into the age of Pisces, age of Pisces was the age of believing. In the age of Aries is the age of knowing. So if you're still walking, while we're in the age of Aries, that's why so many people want to know and are finding out a bunch of knowledge because this, represent- this is representative of the age of Aries, the age of knowing. Well, we just came out a whole bunch of motherfuckers believing in Jesus, which was the age of belief. So the real crime, if you still walk around this motherfucker with the, in the age of knowing where the, just the Internet exists, fuck going to get any books, the Internet exists and Wikipedia exists, and you still tell me I believe in Jesus, you are, you are a true asshole now. Because <laughs> even my religious-ass cousins, at least they, they, they at this point, they're like, you know something, I listened to Bobby Hammett, and he's absolutely right. He would be better if he took his ass to church. <laughs> so they're not giving it up, but they're at least trying to factor in shit that they can't deny. You get what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? Because they're in the age of knowing, but they're holding on to the age of belief. Them's the motherfuckers at the bottom of the mountain <laughs> making the golden cap. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Well, we well, we rolling off the mountain. Look, we got the new hot shit, son. This is that new shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas like, nah, son, Jesus. We got that new hot shit, nigga, in the form of tablet. So, uh, in your in your study, Aline, the golden calf story. What what have you come across in your metaphysical understanding? Right. Well, like you said, it symbolizes that age of Taurus. Um, the okay. calf, of course, um, you know, um, grows into um, a cow or a bull, and which then, of course, symbolizes Apis, or which is the form of Osa, um, as well as also the feminine aspect of Osa would be um, um, Hoth or, or Het Heru. Um, so, uh-huh. which is talking about the age of 12, it's like you see. Um, um, they believe in, uh, like you say, they believe in the age. Um, which that they was in, and this new, um, which was the age of Taurus, and the new age was a, in which that of course, like you said, was the age of um, Aries. Um, that's mm, what that horn okay. symbolized. Was now blown in the age of um, Aries, and as Aries came in, of course, as Aries going out, we had to um, come in uh, Pisces, but in between we had um, the calculation of Jesus. In which that he was called the Lamb, which is talking about Aries itself, and then um, as he um, died on the cross, crossing over a portion of from Aries to the age of Pisces, um, now mm-hmm. it's a symbol for Jesus' face. So now, um, not only is he called the Lamb of God, which is talking about Aries itself, but also he's now referred to as the fisherman of men. Um, and mm. So now you see Christians with this symbol on the back of their cars everywhere they go now. Um, mm. So um, that's what it symbolized with the changing, as you said, of the old um, eon or age, which is 2,160 years into mm. the age of 2,160 years, in which that um, all 12, 2,160 years comes to 2,000 or well, 25,120 years. Um, degree, yeah. Great year the procession right. of the equinox. It was that the sun mm-hmm. traveled through all 12 zodiac on Um So mm-hmm. um, that is actually what took place, and that's what um, the cow symbolizes the end of the, of the um, Torah city, um, the beginning and end of the age of the Lamb, and as you said, of the blowing of the horn, uh, which is, of course, symbol, um, as you see, the one that you can be pulled up um, is actually um, the, um, the horn 
of the land. Mm-hmm, 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 right? okay. And of course, as mm-hmm. you see, uh, mm-hmm, so, you know, so I did with you, brother, but that's exactly what I came across with. Um, and um, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Tight. But even then, right, even then, when you're talking about that's as a, that's, you know, that's still um, as above, so now let's get it as below um, because that's as, um, you know, we want as within, so without. So that's the so without and as above part. Let's get the, you know, within and the below part in which that the Lamb of God, the perfect human body, is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. And mm-hmm. so um, that age never changes, you know, that changing is the story behind that. So, for example, before we created the Lamb of God, which is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland now, um, we once called it, um, you know, the golden age of what is called of Taurus, or what is called um, the golden calf. Mm, you know, okay. Um, mm, okay. Now we can be called to it as the man with the pitcher of water. Mm-hmm. That pours forth the truth. You know, mm-hmm. the truth being on the excretion of the particular chemicals, which is made of, you know, which is melanin, and which that is um, put forth, or what's called penalin or DNT, which is um, put forth in the body, and which that brings forth the truth. Um, you mm-hmm. know, so now we call it, you know, you go to Luke 22 10, you will see Jesus talking to his disciples. Uh, well, what will happen with us, you know, to us in the last days? And Jesus said, well, you will uh, run him with a pitcher of water in his hands. Follow him into his house. Surely, mm-hmm. um, the man of pitcher of water is nothing more than Aquarius. But right. the mm-hmm. end term never changes. Each time that story is told over and over again, is the fact of the soul is embedded under the pain of man, and that's what all those things actually symbolize. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so... Um, that's the internal aspect, which is even greater than just the astrological which that, you know, um, I think it's caught up on, such as Jordan Maxwell. Um, Jordan right. Maxwell right. can't explain anything esoterically because he's so exoteric. Right, right. Mm-hmm. right, right. So right. He explains absolutely nothing. He He's excellent at shutting down the, the, the physical religious aspect and telling where it comes from. Right. But when it gets to the esoteric right. part, he's he's barren. He's right. naked and ashamed. Right. Right. <laughs> he's right. naked and he's <laughs> naked and unashamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um uh, uh so let me let you know guys the part one to this discussion with brother Leem and they will be a part three is on YouTube. So what you need to search is Brother Panic Ask Dr. Aline L. Bay Questions, and you'll be able to find the first portion of this discussion is on Aline's uh, YouTube, which is Asaru Aline L. Bay. You can search it, but either way, you'll be able to find that and much more discussions with Aline on his YouTube page for part one. Part two will be there, part three, and we'll see where we at if Aline's still up for part four because as you can see, we haven't really even scratched the surface of how deep we can go with just this subject. And this, we only talking about the Bible. So, in in you, you talk, and we're talking to a guy who is well understood, I would say, in in a lot of areas of this metaphysical thing we study. In. We're only staying on one subject, something that he's actually covered in many lectures before, and in many deep ways. So, you know. We, but we do understand there's a lot of new people who listen to these shows, so we always speak as if, I, and I especially make a point of it, as if this is the first time you're hearing this information. And um, this, in, in, in this way, we, we put ourselves in a position where we raise people up to, 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 to get the thirst and the know-how to study for themselves. The true reason to raise people up as opposed to just entertaining ourselves with saying a bunch of complex things, which which the only people who get it is other motherfuckers who say complex things. So we're not interested <laughs> in entertaining right. each other. We're interested in teaching people for real. So therefore, yeah. um, I have no problem putting myself in the position of someone who does not know and ask Aline these questions because it serves a lot of people who are coming up and coming out of this and need this. I get on a daily basis a whole bunch of people who are fresh out the church 
who thanked me, Brother Patty, because you said this, and 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 or or I was getting out of the church, and you became a bridge to to a whole bunch of other people that that like to call themselves advanced. Now I could play the game and call myself advanced and say a whole bunch of shit that will lose a lot of motherfuckers easy. Right. But that's not what I'm about. I, I I know that's not what Brother Leem's about. It's about talking to the people. So that's what we're trying to do. So when you hear these type of lectures where and, and I'm gonna be real, we're toning it down. A lean especially toning it down because he's trying to talk to new people who are still struggling with their religious belief system, their mind control, you get what I'm saying? So now we have documented on First World Order a whole series of those who are still going through that mind control, uh, 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 something to bridge you into something greater than that shit you've been told in Sunday school. So there's going to be a part three. If, 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 if we get cut off, that's why I'm saying all of this, if we get cut off, you can hear part one on you uh, on YouTube, Aleem's YouTube page, just search for Brother Panic Ask Doctor Aleem Obey Questions, and then you'll get then you'll get um, you'll get what you need. That's where you'll see this eventually see this entire series. So those who need to listen to it again, or are hearing this one and miss the first one, that's where you'll find it on Doctor Aleem Obey's YouTube page. And like I said, you'll probably be able to find it on his website. Or if not, you'll be find you'll definitely find other things you need there, Doctor Aleemelbay dot com. Anything you need from me, you need to see my new website, occultlectures.com. dot com. A whole bunch of shit going on, a whole bunch of shit about about to go on. Yes, sir. What did you say? I was that? saying that you should also see that also on on um, Annex, um, um new website also, as well as also on his YouTube channel. So. Yes. Okay. So uh, yeah, I, I was going to leave it for Aleem. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to put this up on my channel as well, but I can do that as well. Um, but yes. it, it'll be there. We're, we're going to start making this stuff available there because, quite frankly, YouTube is a little bit more reliable than Blog Talk is. So we, we right. we're going to be documenting a lot of what we do there, and and you know because it's easy to find. It's a little bit more stable. And um, you know we could do more with it. There, it's a little bit harder to uh, 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 hear these things on YouTube, up uh, you know, on Blog Talk, but easier on YouTube. Plus, you get a visual. Plus, you can come back and pick up where you left off. There's so many advantages to it. So, so start looking for us on YouTube. Um, nine times out of ten, the show name is going to be the same on YouTube. If there's something different, we'll be happy to let you know. But my Channel on YouTube is Occult Lectures. Aleem's channel on YouTube is Asaru Aleem El Bay. All you can search, you just look for Dr. Aleem, and I'm sure they'll come up. And if you have any problems finding it, you can always email us. You can email us at the website, dralemelbay.com. Look for the contact. You can email me at occultlectures.com. Just go there, look for my contact, and send me an email there. If you're having problems finding anything or need any help along them there lines. All right, until we get kicked out the building, we're going to keep going. And the next thing I want to ask about is the Ark of Covenant. Um, what I see is uh, a lot of information by William Henry where he talks about the Ark of Covenant, Covenant. And he talks about it as, first and foremost, in his metaphysical understanding, the chest of Osiris or the pillar of Osiris, and and then he talks about it as uh, 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 an apparatus, an uh, energy apparatus. I can't remember. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, a, uh, he speaks about it as a capacitor, um, where it's a, just an apparatus that can store energy. Like a capacitor is – you have a – your power in, the, in your computer is a capacitor. It stores up energy – then it feeds energy to your right. computer, not directly from the AC, but it, from stored energy. So even unplugged, right. if you pierce that capacitor, you still can get an electric shock. So he's basically saying right. the Ark Covenant was a capacitor, some sort of ancient right. capacitor. Which is, which, is not, right, which is nothing but the brain. The brain is the receiver, which capacitor, but which then right. you have to then write some maps that the fire is stored and induces electric currents in the brain. Um mm-hmm. Those current converges upon the middle portion of the brain, which is the third ventricle, 
with the pain of glass is over. You go to exercise on page 15, you see a galaxy like cloud hovering over the pineal gland, which we refer to as the fourth eye, in which that gives you access to um, cosmic travel and communication processes and much more. Um, uh-huh. When the Kutalini raises up from the third ventricle um, to the pineal gland in the third ventricle, it beams, it beams um, the Kutalini energy up into that galaxy like cloud. So it's like looking at Star Trek being the sky. All right. Oh, so, mm-hmm. uh, so Kirk is what is about. That's the Holy of Holies, which is talking about actually Holy of Holies, which is your hand. Um, so uh-huh. um, in the first ventricle, you have, we, you have cerebellum. Um, so we from you have the cerebellum, so which they have all over and protected under. So then beneath that, um, towards the back, and up towards the um, third ventricle area, you have um, the cerebrum. Um, the word cerebrum and the word cherubim within Hebrew is the same. All right, the word cherubim um, refers to angels. All right, just like there was two angels or two cherubims that was put with flaming swords um, outside of the gates of. Eden to keep Adam and Eve from coming back into Eden. That is talking about these two um, cherubims or cerebrums of which that covers the third ventricle area and which that protects it um, and, you know, protects, you know, the individual, you know what I'm saying, an overload of electromagnetic energy, all right? Uh Um, So that means that cerebrums or the angels symbolize detection which that keeps you from getting overloaded with energy, uh-huh. all right? Uh-huh. So, yes, um, even, that's what he's talking about, even when um, it's dead, you know what I'm saying, about when the brain um, is dead, it still is some type of electrical current. Of course, we understand it as nerve current. And we understand that uh-huh. the nerves, um, you can cut a head off a snake or either off a chicken, and you can see the neck of, you can see the head and neck of the, um, the body of the snake still running around, you know, sw- you know, swirling mm-hmm. around. Um, you can see right. the, um, the, the head, you know, the chicken body running around even without the head. When the head right? is cut so, off, right. right? Even when the head is cut off, so it's, that's what it's talking about. Like still, electrical magnetic conduction that is that is changing through the nervous system, mm-hmm. just, which like a, just, um, like capacitor, just, just like a just like a just like a capacitor, right? Right. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. God damn. All right. All right. Shit. Damn. Now we get into it. Now the River Jordan. <laughs> the River Jordan. I know you talked a little bit about that in your lecture. Um, you know, uh, you know, you hear this. You know, you hear the saying the story. You must be baptized in the River Jordan. So much so <laughs> that niggas in churches, you know, you can't make it into heaven unless you baptize. Nigga, dunk you under some water. It don't feel right, you know what I'm saying? I seen nigga, I seen once seen a nigga get baptized in a motherfucking wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? They dunk the whole wheelchair in the shit. <laughs> the fuck is going? This don't make no sense. I don't think Jesus was doing right. this. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So the River Jordan, I know there has to be a metaphysical understanding of that, oh, and man. and I ask for your breakdown on the River Jordan. Right, the river Jordan, the third ventricle that we just finished talking about, just cerebral fluid, mm-hmm. which is the mm-hmm. chamber of the third of the third ventricle. So the mm-hmm. water or the cerebral fluid that is there, uh, which is brain fluid, um, you know, symbolizes the river Jordan. And how we know that, of course, uh, within the Holy Quran, um, and also within esoteric teachings of the Gnostics, when they speak about Jesus, Jesus symbolizes the sperm oil, which is the sperm itself, and as the Sperm up from the prostate gland to the spinal column, um, you know, from the prostate gland, from the testes that symbolizes the Sea of Galilee, as it comes up mm-hmm. um, through the Nile River, which is the spinal fluid of spinal column, and it goes mm-hmm. into the brain, which is the River Jordan. Um, it is baptized, as we would say, by the spark of God, which is actually the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. The sperm um, receives the spark of God from that area. And it is baptized in the cerebral fluid, and then it travels back down from the third screw of the brain down the spinal column, which is the Nile River, down to the Sagatta Lake to be good for. Um, so that's what that is all symbolic to, is the 
movement of that spermazoa, which is actually Jesus, because um, when you look at sperm underneath a microscope, you will see that light is emanated from around the head of the sperm, symbolically in Christ. Just like when you come out the womb, you know, you suppose that, that light around your head, you know, in which uh -huh. the holy men call it a halo. We refer to it as a helios, which is the word sun in Greek and Latin. Um, so, right. um, so that helios is actually the form of a halo, is the word heru, which is heru. So whenever you see mm -hmm. that sun that's around the head, it symbolizes the activation of the heru principle. Um, you mm -hmm. know, um, and that's how we you know it's that golden sun that's around the head. You know, which that, mm -hmm. that's just going to be emanated. But it's meant to those levels because they have a master um, the kundalini energy. Under the microscope, mm -hmm. you can actually see the light inside and outside of the head of the sperm. Mm -hmm. It's all the mm -hmm. sperm knows who the Christ is because it was he, she, that got baptized in the river Jordan. So all mm -hmm. the others know who it is. And so they actually develop defenses just like on a football team in order to make sure that he can right. get into uh, the one with the um, ball. Hit, the one with the ball. The fashion canal to go into the cervix in order to get into um, the ovary to produce that egg into um, you know manifestation that forms within the uterus of the woman. So ah. they know what the job is. They already know. So they are doing. They are there in order to make sure that he gets to that area. It's not a fight between um, 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 him, she, and you know, and them. It's a fight. They already know who mm -hmm. it is because he because he she got tired of the in the majority. He's the one who got right. the most right. And that's the one who get formed into manifestation and which that, i.e., you come back here, ask the Christ. The Christ exists within you. The Holy Spirit exists within you. God exists within you. The Holy Spirit is mm. you. So now, the chosen, you know, the chosen one. You're the chosen one. Chosen. Right. It'd be like the chosen one. Right. Right. And that's what will stop him. I'm the chosen one. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Damn. Okay. So it seems like a lot of these things are basically just just talking about the human goddamn body. Yeah, right. Right. It's it's just about the inner workings of the human body. So we should be clear right. that this goddamn Bible ain't got shit to do with history, ain't shit to do with nothing but the, your goddamn self. The origin of, of these books. If we can, let's talk a little bit about some of the origins of the Bible. So, because most people think the Bible is written by. One motherfucker or a bunch of motherfuckers starting from scratch. But we know a lot of these are based upon older books. Could you name some of the right. older books involved? Right. You know, that right. this shit totally exists before this. Because people need to understand the Bible is either second, third, and fourth generation uh, writing. Right. We have the book of Yushia, uh, so mm -hmm. H U S I A, Yushia. Um, you have the mm -hmm. book of. Pyramid, which is called the Pyramid Text or the Mer Text. You mm -hmm. have the um, text, all right? Mm -hmm. Portions of the video, what is called the Perhem Heberu, which is the uh, mm -hmm. book by day and night, or what is misnomed, the Book of the Day, by mm -hmm. E.A. Wallace Bright. Um, you also mm -hmm. have Sumerian text for the Illumin English. You have the um, mm -hmm. Epic of Gilgamesh. Mm -hmm. And you right. have um, the Book of Etana, you know, from the Sumerian text, which is actually like the Book of Enoch. Um, mm, okay. You have all these, all these books in which that um, story, the so-called Jews, as they would say, being in Egypt and then being exiled within Babylon, and then leaving mm -hmm. from, you know, Egypt and Babylon, they took the mysteries of these particular schools and formulated um, the Bible um, as we now know it. This is what it said, mm -hmm. but really what we're talking about is Arias Pisos, who formed, um, who was part of the Roman aristocratic family, and um, mm -hmm. he took the teachings of the 72 rabbis, which was actually mm -hmm. those from the Old Testament, and he put the New Testament together based off those same writers of the Old Testament, but also is related to the Ptolemies from 
out of um, Egypt, who would say he would go and do his research study there, in which that mm-hmm. he had certain information, and in which that now become the play of the story called the New Testament. Um, so um, this is how the Old and the New Testament came together and came about. Uh, was from these particular um, so-called rabbis and these Roman aristocratic families, of which that was also Jewish, or um, you know, um, in their so-called um, bloodline, as it, as it is said, you know, and mm-hmm. so we get the Bible um, saying in the in the way in which that we have it. And of course, you know, later mm-hmm. on you got um, King James who. Um, with Francis Bacon away in Shakespeare, who got the information from the Tinsdale Bible. From the Tinsdale Bible, you got the um, um, the Septuagint, um, the Septuagint, um, in which that was also um, the older um, version, the Greek um, Bible, which actually originated from the Hebrew um, threat. So you have that lineage mm-hmm. going down the line, you know, of course, and, you know, um, King James was so called the the grand the um, grand master of the Lodge of England and you had mm-hmm. Francis Bacon who was actually you know, you know, who was called William Shakespeare, who was the forty sixth man on the council of forty six called the Shakespeare Council, who actually um, you know, which was you know, you had teachers from Oxford, from Cambridge and from different other places there within Europe who said was made up of that 46-person um, council. Um, you know, I should say man, because there was actually a woman on there, too. But he was part of that council that um, produced. The Bible was written, um, the King James was 1604 to 1609, right? And then mm-hmm. um, Shakespeare, for instance, as they just say, took over from 1609 and had it finished editing it. By 1611, mm-hmm. this is why we go to Psalms 46, as he being a 46 person on the team, as well as also being 46 years old at the time. He chose Psalms 46 mm-hmm. to embed his name, Shakespeare. But then if you count 46 words down, you can see the shake. If you count 46 words up from Shalab, which means to worship, you can see the word spirit. Mm-hmm. And then with all three paragraphs, you can see the word will, as in William Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. So we saw mm. that no coincidence based on right, the right. Ain't no right. Yeah. Mm. That is no coincidence. Wow. Let I want to make sure that came out clear. Say that portion please for me one more time because it was a little bit shaky about William Shakespeare. Right. Just the part where um, you can find where they can find it. Right. Book of Psalms you say, um Shakespeare had to have been forty six year old or Francis Bacon had to be forty six years old, happened to be the forty six a person on the um, editing team um, of the Shakespearean Council um, up mm. under King James. And if you count 46 words down, you, sound, you find a shake. If you count 46 words up um, from Shalat, which means to worship within Hebrew, or uh, Shalat, mm-hmm. which means to worship, you will find the word spear. So hence you find mm-hmm. the word shake, spear. And then in uh, the paragraph, you find the word will. Um, so, um, will, um, in the first paragraph, will, second paragraph, and will in the third paragraph. So, symbolically, um, the three, um, symbolic to the three, the mind, body, and soul, symbolic to that, that, um, you know, three, you know, will. And then, of course, um, Shakespeare in between those three. Um, so, that uh-huh. is really left so you can pick out, um, the edited Bible. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not saying so. So, like you pointed out, that, that that's not a mistake. They're telling you right there. No. So, like, just just seeing that alone, how you can't even that should bring anybody who who says God wrote this fucking book. That should end that. You know what I'm saying? Just seeing just just that breakdown alone, that should end that. You know what I'm saying God ain't God's funny, but he ain't that funny. You know what I'm saying? He's funny for making you come in and take a shit and all that, but he ain't that fucking funny. You know what I'm saying? He ain't Tyler Perry level funny. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's like, uh, uh, and it's so I guess why we hear Shakespeare mm-hmm. that had to have been the Rosicrucian. Matter of fact, the leader mm-hmm. of the Rosicrucian in that time period. 
Mm-hmm. So here you had King James, who was the, um, the grand master of the Lodge of England, and France making I E and Shakespeare leader of the world institution. Mm. Okay. Pope is at his, a pope is at their best. Mm. Okay. Okay. You find the King James with the book analogy. Uh-huh. Analogy. Okay. Mm, interesting. So, actually, then while we're here, um, before Adam, before we go into anything about the Rosicrucian that you brought up, let's um, talk about um, Psalms a little bit. Because, and why I'm going to talk about them, because even in magic studies, um, deep deep ingrained in magic, um, they'll have you do two things, actually. The sixth and seventh book of Moses, you'll find that in Botanicus, and you'll find Psalms in Botanicus. And a lot of rituals and spells involve those incan- incantations using Psalms. So what's the, and, and I've heard there the hymns of Akhenaten and all of this stuff. Um, so uh, what, what what's the, the science and the power of psalms. And I've heard you actually talk about empowering yourself with psalms and even some um, Bible verses and, and what we've known, come to know as Bible prayers, the Lord's Prayer. I've heard you break that down. So could you share, shed some light on psalms and all of that stuff? Right. Actually, these are spells. Um, psalms was actually, like you said, the helm of Atan, Atan, Uncle and so he wrote spells, these um, are power, you know, words of power, or what is called hakamus mm-hmm. or hesed sounds. And so whenever you um, say this particular psalm, that's you know, these sounds of ahatun, ahaknaten, um, you will find that they mean certain things. When you get um, the book, the power of psalms, or you can get mm-hmm. it. <clears throat> My wife can have books. A book uh, called Hymns of Atlantis. Um, you know, the, you know, the hymn of um, the Sons of Song. Um, you can get that book from us. Uh-huh. Um, you see that. Like, for example, Psalms 1 and read um, is to move negativity. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so each psalm symbolizes um, a certain thing that it does. All right. So, like mm-hmm. for example, Psalm 23 um, symbolizes um, the embodiment of power. Okay. Oh, and um, if you read, say, that more, say that one more time. Is the embodiment, the right? The embodiment of power. Embodiment of power. Okay. Right, because when you read Psalms, um, you can you uh, when you read the 23rd Psalm, it says. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and to lie down the green pastures, and the still waters, and restore my soul for his name's sake. Gave no work to the valley of shadow of death, I will send no evil, I will with me. I will have that mm-hmm. staff in the company, that will be the presence of my enemy, and notice my head before you, that I cut one of over, should the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of life, and I will dwell in the midst of the Lord forever. That is actually um, bringing in up, all right? And you're you saying those particular verses. So it actually is like the resurrection of the Kundalini, so hence the empowerment. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh-huh. Because the last, right, first thing I shall not want, and in other words, um, you know, what the hell are you talking about? You shall not want. You shall not want what? But what it's saying is that mm-hmm. you, didn't, you didn't want any of the attributes of the lower self. Mm-hmm. Right, That's so you, you basically you, should, you shall not yeah, be wanting or you, you, you don't need any right. earthly thing to, to to define your happiness, basically. Right. When you right. say you sh- shall not want, you don't need any earthly things to define your happiness or or, or, or to, right. you know, to, to, to make you feel complete, if you will. You know what I'm saying? What is in right. you is right. what is in you is all you really need. Right. What is what? Right. To that I know if my head will bore you, you already know something about the Messiah by this time period, which is the activation of the third eye. And then mm-hmm. you got my cup right. coming over, which is talking about this, mm-hmm. these chemicals which is penolating you know, from the pineal gland at, this, at that time period. You know, mm-hmm. and so it's telling you what is taking place or what you want to manifest 
you know what I'm saying, from, you know, from diminishing your lowest self and then resurrecting yourself into your higher self. That's what the whole Psalm 23 is about, about um, total empowerment. So that's what that symbol is. Like. This is why it's one of the most popular songs, um, you know, out of all 150 of them. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or the hymns of a son and also of his father, I mean, the whole chat. Right. Those songs were written by Amenho Tap, who was Akhenaten's father, as he symbolizes Amenho Tap the third, and Akhenaten, or uh, Unkenten, symbolizes Amenho Tap the fourth. All right, so uh-huh. um, the third and the fourth time, they the ones that put that picture come together. So also, and we um, now you know, trying to find further proof of them putting together the songs of Solomon, and what is also in the Christian mm-hmm. and Proverbs. Mm, okay. So, okay, so I heard you also talk about the Lord's Prayer. Right. And in, in, in that, um, you know, because, you know, we hear anybody from the Bible uh, who's anti-Bible, they hear that shit and you running. And, and right. so was I until you broke, until I heard you break it down in the early 2000s. It was like, oh, okay, which it, it figures. So um, while we're here, could you break down the Lord's Prayer? And that's, and that's that I am your that shall not want, that all, all white people say on TV right before they get it in their ass. Right, right. <laughs> well, we uh-huh. talked about um, um, the 23rd Psalm as it's talking about the upscaling of energy, you know what I'm saying, which is mm-hmm. getting up to the platform of the root pineal gland. Now you have mm-hmm. the cosmic energy coming down to the pineal gland, down into the body now, and that is actually through the Lord's Prayer. 